in today's service, uh, we're doing things differently as led by the Holy Spirit, where we're focusing on the same message and just taking us through um, to make sure we get to the end together. We're going to begin to talk about the tree of life in our first service, second, third, and our fourth service today. I believe that one of the major reasons why the Holy Spirit has, wants to want to have it this way is because if we break it down in, in a way other than this, there's a huge possibility that part of it might be stolen before the next installment and before the next installment. So it is why it's coming as a deluge this morning and this afternoon. And I know that the Lord will grant us grace to receive and to keep the word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. There are three concepts we're going to be examining in the course of our services today. The breath of life, the river of life, and then laying it up for the tree of life. The breath of life the river of life, and then the tree of life. We give Jesus praise for our night prayers. It was fantastic. It was exhilarating. It was beautiful. Every word you can imagine that is glorious, that is what it was. If you were not there, um, we have it online. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 30. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 30. For all the wildlife, or rather to all, also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. So the ones that are able to eat the food are only the things that have life, like the animals and mankind, the breath of life. The breath of life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Please pay attention. Man became a living being. The devil gets his power from our ignorance. And the only way to dispel ignorance is by light, by revelation, by understanding. You're going to see things today that you wish and pray Adam and Eve saw. Otherwise, we'll not be where we are today. But we thank God for Jesus. So the breath of life is what activated life inside of mankind and animal kind and every other living kind on the earth. It is the breath of life. Now, let's go to verse 8 now. The Bible says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. Inside the garden. And the garden is where the action was. The garden is like the kitchen. Glory to Jesus. If some people could put a bed in their kitchen, they would do that. That's where the action is. You hear some people middle of the night. And you're wondering, is that a rat or a human being? <laughs> the Lord planted a garden Eastward in Eden, and he put man at the center of the garden. And that is what God is still doing today. He's still putting his children at the center of the action. The land flowing with milk and honey, the Bible says, is where he's putting his children. Wherever you are, that is where the gold is. You don't go to where gold is. Gold is where you are. The moment you realize God has put you somewhere, look pro properly. The gold is there. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If Jesus puts you in a place, don't be looking and running helter-skelter, as they say. Look around you. There must be gold there. Because this God would never put his children where things are dry. He always puts us where there is action. 
no matter your career, don't listen to people that say, oh, this is where the money is, that's where the money is. No, 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 no. Where, whatever God tells you to do is where the money is. If he tells you to begin to paint, even though painters, artists don't make money, you'll be the first to begin to make money. Yeah. You're acting like you don't want to make money. Say amen properly. Yeah. Amen. When, when it's time to pay your mortgage, you say, rabba, ba, 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 sha. You <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go to verse 9. Let's not get carried away. We have a lot to cover today. And of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight. He put man there first, then he began to make things to grow. You have creative power. <laughs> Amen. You, you, know, you know something? Sometimes God puts his children in darkness because he does not want there to be too much competition before he turns on the light. If there was light before he put you there, you would have faced serious contention. You know, the Bible says God said that he, 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 he took the children of Israel through a different path. Because he did not want them to go back because of the war. We serve a God that is very, very, very strategic in thinking. Now look at this. He put man, he began to cause the trees to grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of where? Of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't think you saw it there. Let's go back. <laughs> you know, some people have said, if God did not want them to eat the fruit, why did he put the fruit there, the tree there? Do you know that the tree of life was in the same place where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was? The devil never tempted them to eat of that tree. The devil does not want you to succeed. Why didn't the devil tempt them, tell them to eat out of the tree of life? His mission would have been ended. There were two trees. He said, go and eat of this one, the knowledge of good and evil. Take that one. Take that one. So all this while, Adam and Eve, were they, were they were hanging around a tree that would have given them life, but they never touched it. And that is what is still happening today. People have Bibles they've never read. Filled with life, yet they are complaining. Life is in every single page. Every single word. Every single page, every single word, yet are we eating out of the fruit of the tree of life? That's a question for us to ponder. Are we, are we talking to somebody today? And then, and then, and please, please follow me, follow me, I'm teaching. Now, the Lord God did something. He said, I love you so much, verse 15 now. And I want to give you an instruction that will preserve your life. There are many trees here. Don't touch the one that will make you know good and evil. Don't touch that one. He told them, turn the garden. Verse 16 now, please. Yes. And the Lord commanded the man saying, of every tree, every including the tree of life. Every tree, including the tree of life, you can freely eat. Life in the morning, life in the afternoon, life at night, wake up in midnight, midnight snack, eat life. But don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because I love you too much. But that is what many people are still running to today. They live life and they run to good and evil. Justice. <laughs> Justice. Is another name for good and evil. <laughs> and then the devil came. Everybody say the devil came. You see, the moment you begin to talk to the devil, sin looks good. 
The moment you begin to have conversations with the devil, sin will look good. When you are talking to God, righteousness looks good. But when you begin to talk to the devil, sin looks good. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 to 7. Life was good, and then Mr. Devil, or Mrs. Devil, or Devil showed up. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. I, I've skipped a, a, a few parts there. The devil came and began to have conversations with, at that point, the weaker link. Not because of her gender, but because of revelation. She was not there when God told Adam, don't eat of the tree. So she didn't have as much knowledge as Adam had. So he went for the one that did not have knowledge. And that is what he's still doing today. It's good to pray and pray and pray. But if you don't know the truth, the devil would play you with us like, like ping pong. You will not surely die. He began to have conversations. Verse 5. You see, many times uh, we, we are brought into a situation after the people have had long conversations with the devil. If only you bring us in before you start talking to the devil. You have talked to the devil for years. Now, now the conversation has manifested in sickness, in disease, in, in all kinds of issues. Then now you are bringing us in to bring restoration. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. My question to you is, were they not already like God? The Bible says, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. So they were already like God. But God did not want the stress of knowing good and evil to come upon man. Do you know one of the reasons why we don't see germs and viruses? Imagine if our eyes were open to see germs and Jesus. <laughs> Imagine what your life will be like. You might not even live in your own home anymore. You might not touch your wife again or yours, but ah! <laughs> because you're seeing germs everywhere. I, I, I go to some restaurants sometimes and I'm like, I don't know, want to know what is happening in the kitchen. I, I just don't want to know. <laughs> Ignorance in that case is bliss. I don't want to know. Because the, the, the waiters will bring the food and I can see part of their finger touching the ah. I'm like, oh Jesus, just, just bless it. <laughs> Kill the germs and just move on. I went to boarding school where I mistakenly saw the action in the kitchen. Where they were, they were pounding the thing, and this man took the sweat and put it in. I said, Jesus, I will eat that food. <laughs> I had no choice because of the death of hunger. <laughs> there are some things that we don't need to know. <laughs> because now I'm eating the food, and I'm saying, ah, ah, am I going to die? Is this the end? <laughs> you see, Eve began to have conversations with the devil. Then the devil began to tell her, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. You'll be like God. I don't want to be like God. <laughs> I don't want to be like the most high God. It's too much work. It's too much work. The Bible says the Lord neither sleeps nor slumber, but I want to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want to slumber. <laughs> but there are times when I've worked hard. I want to just close my eyes and rest. But God can never do that. The whole world will just be destroyed. Yet, that is what the devil presented to them. You see a wife that God has given one of the best things ever, but she wants to be the man. I say, if only you knew. If only you knew what you're trying to take on for yourself. You see children that should enjoy their childhood. They want to grow up very quickly. And then they grow up and they realize adulting is hard and then they want to grow down. 
start wearing skinny jeans and everything. <laughs> I must be a child by force. <laughs> May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. <laughs> so this is where their issues began. The toiling began. The stress began. And this is where the work began. This is where the worry began. This is where anxiety began. And then she took, and what a wonderful wife. She found something she thought was good, and she presented it to her husband. Husband, come and eat. Come and go down with me, amen? (laughs) Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Oh, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. They began to cover themselves. They did not need the covering of the Most High God anymore. Hmm. Be careful when the world begins to call you wise. Because perhaps you are now beginning to take the place of God in your own life. Then the eyes, they might have been celebrating this reality. Oh, I can see, I can see. Not knowing that they've just invited themselves to a life of hardship. Yet, there was a tree of life. They never touched it. How will you know you've eaten from this fruit? Today, worry, anxiety. Worry, anxiety, fear. That's evidence that you have you are eating this fruit regularly. Worry, anxiety, fear. Worry, anxiety, fear. That's evidence that you have eaten from the fruit, the tree of good and evil. Worry. What will happen tomorrow? Ah, tomorrow. Ah, tomorrow. Today you are well, but you are killing your chances of sin tomorrow. That's the tree of the knowledge of, you know too much. That's why there are some people that will never have visions, no matter how much they pray for it. You have not seen demons, you are already worrying. And you want the Lord, open, open my eyes so I can see. And the Lord says, if I open your eyes, will you? (laughs) <laughs> Some of the people you call your friends, you begin to see horns. Are you, <laughs> are you okay? No, no, I think, I think. <laughs> and you just begin to run in the opposite direction. May the Lord keep you under his wings. May the Lord keep you under his wings. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now. Oh, Jesus, help me. Please pray for me. Say, Lord, help, Pastor. <laughs> Let's go to verse 22. I know God has answered your prayers. Verse 22. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Hmm. Ah, may this never be your portion. <laughs> Anything with more than one head is a monster. The moment... A real authority sees that you're already struggling for the authority. They will give you space. They must give you space. It's an insult to be contending with someone you know is not at your level. They might not know that, but but God knew that for himself. They have become, they can't, we can't be, we can't be sharing the same space anymore. No. It's like Absalom. The moment he began to sleep with his father's wives. Ah. In essence, he was saying, I'm already like you. We're at the same level. So one person had to go for the other. And in this case, it had to be Absalom. Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life that had been there all this while and live forever, let's remove him from this space. (laughs) 
<laughs> Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground, to begin to toil. He said, you don't want to cease worrying? Okay, go ahead and continue toiling. You don't want to stop being anxious? Go ahead and continue toiling. But I say that will not be your portion again in the name of Jesus. The series of messages today is to, is to deliver every one of us from toiling, from stress. It is not work that kills people. It is stress that kills people. It's not the work. It's stress. It is stress. It is stress. And then God removed man from the place of bliss. And they went into a place of toiling. So he drove out the man. You know, before this happened, this man did not even know what he wanted. He didn't know he needed a wife. God gave him a wife. <clears throat> a good wife. The good wife. He didn't know he needed to eat. God gave him food. That is a life. That's the good life. Someone calls it the soft life. <laughs> it, is, it is the life that the Lord God a good father wants for you and I. But will you allow him to give you that life? He has made it soft, but you want to make it hard. He say, relax. He say, no. I have, to, I have to work. Morning, afternoon, night. Relax. No, no. Relax. No, okay. Continue. And he drove them out. Go and do what you want to do. They've not lost their job. But they are afraid, what if I lose my job? Ah! <laughs> and they begin. I deliver you from that nonsense in the name of Jesus. No more. <laughs> I, oh, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Fear is bad. Worry is bad. Anxiety is bad. And it must go back to hell where it came from. It must go back to hell where it came from. Some people look way older than their age. Not because of anything, but because of worry, stress. Stress. Let me get back to my notes. Now, what is this telling us? Knowing good and evil simply means your will, your flesh is being activated. Knowing good and evil simply means your flesh is being activated. Your, your flesh is being activated. <laughs> and in this flesh, we're talking about the mind, the will, and the emotions being activated. Enough to begin to contend with God and argue with God. First argument, the moment their eyes were opened. Why am I naked? Who is looking at you? Was it not just Adam and Eve there and then animals? We begin to do, pardon, pardon me please, stupid things. When we begin to know good and evil. We think they are wise things, but they actually, they are not wise. Unnecessary work. They took time to be sewing stuff, covering themselves. This is you. This is your wife. At night, you're both naked anyway. Amen. You're trying not to laugh. It's, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> so now, during the day, they are covering themselves up. And it's just the both of them. The animals don't care whether you're wearing. They don't even know what. The animals are not knowledgeable enough to pay attention to those things. They began to do unnecessary work. Keeping themselves busy for nothing. This is why the moment you, you come to a place of rest, you realize you have time. <laughs> God did not add more to your 24 hours. You just realize that this I used to do doesn't make sense. It's, it makes no sense. No sense. The Lord was telling me, he said, this is some people's schedule for the day. Worry, one hour. One hour, 30 minutes. <laughs> Anxiety, two hours, 15 minutes. 
<laughs> and they just keep, and after a while, because you eat in the morning, you have to eat in the afternoon again. So afternoon worry. They pick it up again. Oh, where did I stop? They pick it up from there, and then they carry on. And, they, and that's what they just continue doing. So now you're at rest. You realize there's nothing to worry about. Now, let me address something quickly. This whole Russia, Ukraine thing, so some people are not into it. Some are inside it. <laughs> you, you know the truth? If Russia uses nuclear weapons today, the world will not be the same. Do, do you understand that? It's the truth. Nuclear weapon is not like a gun. It's not, it's not, it's not a gunshot. It's a, it's a nuclear weapon. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those are the only two places where bombs were dropped on intentionally that were habitable previously. Not habitable anymore. Complete destruction. And the principle behind that is mutually assured destruction. Many other nations, there's no way the US, Russia will target U.S. with a nuclear weapon and the U.S. will not respond back. Understand that. So, so the world is heading for some interesting things. But now, does it make sense to worry about it? That's the question. Makes no sense. Does it affect you going to work tomorrow? No. <laughs> because Putin is not on your way to work. Go to work. Do what you need to do. What if the world ends next week? It cannot end. Let them blow each other up. It's the demonic people that will destroy themselves. Yeah. Will rise out of the ashes. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> it might even be better for us. <laughs> we have doctors in our midst. We have engineers. We have, you know, we have, we have pastors. Very important. <laughs> we, we have everything we need. There's, it, it makes no sense to worry. Makes no sense to worry. Makes no sense to worry. Now, what are the lessons we can learn from this? Someone might be asking me now, Pastor, why didn't they eat from the tree of life? They didn't know that it was good for them. Even good and evil, they didn't know. Because man was still evolving and growing. At some point, I believe God would have come and told them, Hey, why? You've not eaten from that tree. Why not? Why don't you go and take from that tree? I believe the Lord would have told them. But the issue here is sequence. You cannot want to know everything and still want to be at peace. They don't go hand in hand. They don't go hand in hand. This is why Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, from, from verse 3. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 3. No confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I must so. He now began to list his credentials. Circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. Philippians 3. Amen. I'm, I'm moving fast now. Philippians 3. Not 1. Philippians 3. Hallelujah. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, I, I have counted loss for Christ. Paul got the revelation that all those things he was accumulating was like he was eating the fruit from the tree of good and evil. So he was, he was rewinding. He was reversing, 
back to the point where, you know what? I count everything as loss. I choose to act as if I don't know anything. That is where we're going. <laughs> Glory. 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 Verse 8 now. Verse 8. Please. It's a, it's a series. Don't take one aspect and build a doctrine on it and expose yourself to the devil unnecessarily. This is not the end of the matter. Yet indeed I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as what? Rubbish. What a word to use. That I may gain Christ. This is the goal. Christ. What is eternal life? The knowledge of Christ. So knowing Christ is eating from the tree of life. I count all these things as lost because if I'm coming with all this knowledge, I cannot know Christ. No, he's only known by babies. Except you come as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom. <laughs> Amen. Glory to Jesus. I count everything. It is why, it is why when you come, it depends on how you come to Christ. If you, if you came to Christ extremely educated, extremely knowledgeable, successful, you, you have to be stripped of some things. There will be a reset. Then before there's another accumulation. If you came empty, there's nothing to be stripped of. And empty not in possessions, but in your heart. Only the poor in spirit shall what? Shall see God. It depends on how you come. If you came empty, then already you just... Begin. It is why Paul was able to accelerate in the faith way more than others. He understood the mistake that happened in the Garden of Eden. And he said, oh, I'm not going to fall into that trap. I'm coming with all these credentials. I'm, you see, Jesus, I lay it at your feet. Genuinely, I count it as loss because I cannot know Jesus if I still hold on to those things. I'm doing a PhD. It's good to be educated. Doctor this, doctor that is fine. But don't think it is doctor this that will cast out doctor devil. <laughs> because the devil will let you know that if he wanted to have a PhD, he could have had billions of PhDs because he's been here for a long time. I adjure you in the name of Jesus. Story. Story. You just be looking at you adjure me. Adjure. Let me open the dictionary. What is adjure? No. <laughs> Loss before gain. Loss before gain. But Paul, Paul said, no, no, no. I don't want to be stripped. I want to drop it myself. <laughs> I want to drop it myself. I want to look like a fool intentionally so I may gain wisdom. And he, he, he used the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. We're still laying up. We're, we're, we're not there yet. We're just... We're, we're <laughs> I tell you, you gain this understanding, you never lack any good thing again. You will never lack any good thing again in the mighty name of Jesus. This is what happened. Let's keep on reading, please. Verse 9 now. And found, be found in him... So, one thing to know Christ, it's another thing to now be found inside of him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. The law is a compendium of good and evil. Good and evil. Good. That's what the law is. Everything in the law is good and evil. Good. And, the law is there to tell us what is good and what is evil. So, I disassociate myself from that. Why do you get offended? It's because you know good and evil. Someone says you're stupid. It's because you know, say, one word, 
means your integrity, your, your, your <laughs> so now you are vibrating. Now your head is getting hot. Now you are, you are unstable because you know the law. Someone gave you a middle finger. A middle finger is just one finger out of many fingers. <laughs> it's one. You, know, you can point like this, point like this, point any way you want to. <laughs> it is your finger. Do you know that in some countries, this thumbs up is, 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 the, is their own middle finger? If you don't know that, I can do this and do this and do like this. You just be like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Because you don't know. <laughs> because you don't know. You, <laughs> ah, you don't know. You don't know. I choose to disassociate myself from the law. Which is, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. No wonder Peter said, Paul has some deep revelation. If you don't know the past, if you don't study the past, you repeat the mistakes of the past. We are repeating the issues in the Garden of Eden day after day after day without knowing that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's life. And the fellowship of his sufferings, that's life. And to be conformed to his death, that's life. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, that's life. Am I talking to somebody today? Ah, you will never remain the same again. There's, there's, a, there's a path of constant peace. Regardless of what is happening. Someone is angry at you, cursing you out, going online, doing crazy things. You, you, your, your perspective is genuinely different. And you, you, you are trying to be angry, but you cannot be angry because you're, you're, you are in a different state entirely. You didn't put yourself there. The Lord put you there. Because you disassociated yourself from the Lord. Elders and the way they should relate with younger people is from the law. So, you're offended as an elder because you believe in your mind there's a way some young people need to treat you and they didn't treat you that way. Now, you have a right to be offended. Imagine if you disassociated yourself from the law. Suddenly, it's a different ballgame entirely. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just look at your neighbor and smile. Just look at your neighbor and smile. Now, imagine if we wanted to reverse what Adam and Eve did to get them back into the garden. <laughs> what do we do? Imagine if we could reverse, take them back and say, hey, brother and sister, come back. Come back into the place of peace. This is why some people will come to Christ and they say, all hell has broken loose. Everything was good before I came to Christ. No, no, no. The Lord is helping you. He's helping to reset you back. To the point, you see, the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were, was, is not the pinnacle because they never ate from the tree of life. But we need to get back to that point first. Before we now begin to now talk about eating from the tree of life. They never ate from that tree. So going back to the Garden of Eden, I've heard some preachers say, you know, we need to go back to, no, 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 I'm not going back there. I can go back there to visit, but it's from there. It's a connecting flight to the place of life where we are supposed to be. Because Jesus came to give us eternal life. So things have to be reset. It's been shaken. I will yet again shake the heavens and the earth. He's shaken. Not to destroy you. He's shaken. But just hold on. Just, just, just hold on. All hell is breaking loose. Just, just, just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Everything was fine before you could apply for any job. Even though it had nothing to do with your purpose and you get the job. 
But now you are in Christ. And all those doors that could open, they are no more opening. And you think all hell has broken loose. No, no, no. The Lord is helping you to rearrange your life. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. And this only applies to born again Christians. Only applies to the children of God. I'm not a motivational speaker. I just say, oh yeah, yeah, is this you? No matter what you are, the Lord is rearranging, he's helping you know. It's only his children I'm talking about. It's only his children. And there are some people visiting his children today, that you, but you can become his child today. Why is it that nothing is working anymore? No, it's, 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 it's helping you count it as loss. You're going back to the position of neutrality. The time in the garden before they ate the fruit. <laughs> hmm. Glory to Jesus. Second service, I'll get into the river of life. Psalm 46, verse 4 to 5. I'll just introduce it quickly and then we'll rise up to pray. Because we need help. How many people believe we need help? We need help. We need help. We need help. We need help. The more I understand the roadmap, the more I say, oh, Jesus, we need help. We need help. And, 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 and I, I see more and more that sometimes the problem is, it is why it is not just anybody preaching you have to listen to. Some people know how to get you started on the journey, but they don't know how to take you to a destination. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Who God is in the midst of that river, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. So we get to a point where we decide, you know, Lord, I've come to Christ now, I've given my life to Christ. Take me to the point of being in the garden to the point where I didn't know good from evil. Take me to that point. And that is death to self. That is death to self. Take me to that point. Some people get there in a lifetime. Some people never get there. Some people struggle with God for the rest of their life. You take something from them, they'll take it back. That's their whole, that's their life story. He has taken something from them. They'll go around to every man or woman of God around the world to help them get it back from God. That's their story. Some take 10 years to die to self. Some take one year. Some take two weeks. Whatever it is. We need to get to that point. Well, Lord, I, now I'm talking about those that want to become a tree of life. And if you want to know what that means, it's in Revelation 22 from verse 1 to 7 or so. And I'll look at that again. Second service, third service, and fourth service is the grand finale by the grace of God. I'm so excited because it's the same concept as being a city of refuge. We are meant to be a solution to every problem facing the world. If anybody's looking for God, if they find you, they are meant to have found God. But many of us are chasing things rather than being positioned to be a distributor of things. It has to change. We said in the beginning that the Lord put his breath inside man and that made man a candidate for the good things that are here on the earth. The Bible says, and the breath, God breathed the breath of life into man, and man became a living being. Man became a living being because the breath of life came into his nostrils. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And we went on to say that our Heavenly Father is so loving that he planted a garden from verse 8 to 9, eastward in Eden. And placed man at the center of the garden. And we said that wherever God has put you, there is gold there. Because he planted the garden and put man at the center of the garden. 
You might not see the blessings, but understanding the way God works will help you to know that there must be a blessing here. How many of us know that you don't find gold at the surface? You need to have an understanding that gold is in a place for you to continue to drill and drill and drill until you get there. So, God planted the garden and put man there, which he has formed. And verse 9 went on to say that out of the ground, the Lord began to make every tree grow. Now, in this same garden, the Lord also put the tree of life, but Adam and Eve never touched it. The devil never tempted them to take something good. The devil never tempted you to pray. He will not tempt you to go to church. He will tempt you to stay at home. He will never tempt you to do good things, only bad things. So there were two trees there, but the devil pushed them to eat from the tree of good and evil, knowing justice. They went from being in a place of rest to being in a place where now they became police officers. And like we said in the first service, you can never be offended if you don't know the difference between good and evil. You are, we are only offended because we know this is good and this is evil. This is bad and this is good. Why did they treat me in this way? And now you're offended and now you're angry. An offense has come in. So the devil tempted them. Go and eat out of the tree that the Lord said you should not eat out of. Because some people have been wondering, how come God planted that tree? He didn't want them to have it, and he put it there. No, that was not the only tree there. And we went on to say that this is what has been happening. The moment you know good and evil, then stress begins. Worry begins. Anxiety begins. The pressure begins. A baby does not know the difference between a regular outfit and a designer outfit. I've not seen a baby that says, eh, no, it's not Louis Vuitton. No, no, I don't want it. <laughs> no. It's only adults that will be looking at, at things. That's why the Bible says we should come into the kingdom as a little child. As a little child. So, so the moment Adam and Eve ate that fruit, they became able to distinguish between good and evil, which led them to a place of competition with God. Then they got to a place where they can, they can begin, they, they began to query God. You, you know, there are some people like that, they, 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 they challenge God. Look, look at it. can't you see I'm getting old? You know, God, God, I'm still doing the same job, no promotion. This, they, 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 they are so wise that they can now begin to query God. It's because you've eaten the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Praise Jesus. So, we went on to talk about Paul. You can read this when you get home. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 3 to 11. Paul understood the mistake that took place in the garden. And he said, no, 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 no. no. Now, I am coming to Christ. So, all these credentials I have, I'm going to drop them. I'll count them as nothing just so that I can lay hold on Jesus. Because Paul realized that the reason why Adam and Eve no longer had access to life was because they now found themselves in a place where they knew this is good and this is evil. So Paul said, I choose to count my achievements as nothing. So that I can lay hold on Christ. And the Bible says, eternal life is knowing Jesus. When you know Jesus, you have life. When you know Jesus, you have, not when you know of Jesus. And you cannot know Jesus as a fully grown adult. It is why you have to be born again. Become like a baby in knowledge. Nicodemus said, do I have to enter my mother's womb again? And Jesus said, are you a teacher of Israel? And you don't understand these things. We have to put aside the complex, complicated things and just believe that one man died on the cross for your sin. If you are baby enough to believe that, you are a candidate for the tree of life. Some people are too complicated. 
They are too wise to believe that Jesus can come and die on the cross. And because of his death, they don't have to toil anymore. Those are the things that Paul understood. So he said, I laid down my credentials, being a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day, a Pharisee of Pharisees. I put those things aside so that I may lay hold on Christ. And I said, depending on how you come to Christ, we all have to get to a point where everything is reset. So that from there, that is now you being in the garden of Eden. Then from there, you take off from there. Because Adam and Eve never ate the fruit of life. So our goal is not to get to the garden. The garden is a connecting flight. It's to connect to the bigger things available in Christ. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. Can I hear a believing amen? amen? So the fruit that Adam and Eve ate activated their flesh. And they got to a point where they could now begin to query and question God. They, imagine being a supervisor for your supervisor. You just got hired today. And you're already examining, you're already correcting the people ahead. No, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right. That is what knowing good and evil help makes us do. We query God, which makes no sense. We query God. We query, it, it, no, it's different from asking questions so you can grow in understanding. I'm saying we challenge God. We challenge him. Glory to Jesus. So, 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 it is why many people experience, you know, they say, when I give my life to Christ, all hell broke loose. And, and it seemed like as if things were no more working. No, no, no. The Lord is helping you get to a point of death to self. He's trying to help you get to a point of complete reliance. Where you go back to the way Adam and Eve were before they ate the fruit. When they did not know they were naked, even though they were naked. Maybe that's why they say ignorance is bliss. I don't know. To a point where you don't even understand. You don't, you're not concerned with the things because you, your, your attention and your focus is not there. It's just fixed on Christ. Now, but, but, but that's the beginning point. Then there's another concept we see in Revelation 22 that is connected to this. And it's called the river of life. Wherever you see the tree of life, you see the river of life. Because the river of life gives the tree of life, life. And this river is the Holy Spirit. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 2, please. Verse 2. In the middle of a street and on either side of the river, so there were two trees of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Not the fruits, the leaves. <laughs> Glory. Glory, glory. Somebody just shout hallelujah. What a mighty God. That river is the Holy Ghost. John chapter 7 and verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. This is the Holy Ghost. So, you come to Christ, and by the help of the, of the Holy Spirit, you get to a point where things are reset. Now, you are, you are, you are like a baby to Christ. Then the Holy Ghost steps in for his next work, which is for the river to begin to flow. This is why we say be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So when you are baptized, like we saw at night prayers, the river begins to flow. And this is what waters the tree, makes the tree come alive. 
We need the river in order for the tree to be healthy and to blossom in our lives. And this river is embodied by the fruit of the Holy Ghost. And then you now begin to see the gifts, but mainly the fruit. That's our focus today. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits? In Genesis, in Galatians, sorry, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I want you to see the process that our Heavenly Father goes through. There's a map, there's a road map. If you don't know where you're going, you can get to a point where the Lord is helping you, stripping your things, and you say, no, 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 this is too much. And then you check yourself out. But when you know where you're going, you can hold on. You can hold on. Can I hear a loud amen, somebody? You can hold on because you know where you're going. I remember there was a time I went to Calgary for a program, myself and a few of my sons in the faith, and we went, and we, the route we took to Calgary was, was, was the route I was aware of. When we're coming back at night, this GPS of a thing took us through a different route. Ah, I saw it was just driving through. <laughs> you know, it looked very strange. You remember, deserted. I said, okay, are we on the right path? We kept checking the GPS. It says the right path to, to Edmonton. <laughs> but I was suspicious. <laughs> I was highly suspicious. But I was sort of confident because there was GPS. If it was any of the people in the car saying, just keep going, <laughs> I might have said, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always known I could not trust you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I trust them. Do I? You know, so, <laughs> so I was confident because there was GPS saying, you are going on the right path. If you don't know where you're going, and many Christians have dropped off on this path. They've gotten tired. When I was in the world, everything was working. Any job I applied for, I got it. Now I'm in the faith. And, da, 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 da. and then they just drop off. And they get offended with God. Not knowing that their journey is just beginning. Where you're going is to become a distributor. A distributor. A distributor, not someone that is just barely surviving. A distributor. Then the Holy Ghost comes as a river and begins to flow. Breaking down offense. Breaking down trauma. He, he begins to flow. You know, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is singular, love. Everything else are components of love. He begins to work those things out inside your heart and my heart. Before, your face was like a rock, the rock of ages. Now, you are now, you are now smiling. Any little, uh, there are some people like that here. When you first came, we, we couldn't come close to you, except by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> now, you are smiling effortlessly and smiling freely. Love be, will begin to flow. You see people come here and they'll say, ah, this love is too much, this love is too much. It tells you where they have been. And then the love begins to flow. You find yourself forgiving people. Making excuses for people. And you're wondering, Emmanuel, what is wrong with you? You're meant to be a tough guy. What's happening? You are hugging people. You hear a testimony, you, 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 you cry. You, you think we don't see you. And you just... <laughs> and you're like, what is wrong with me? I'm tougher than this. No, the, the river is flowing in your heart now. And then joy begins to flow. You are in your home and you find yourself skipping. I would have asked Mercy to show us, but, but don't worry. You know, <laughs> when she's excited, she skips. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you find yourself just jumping in your home, excited, just laughing. And then, and then you, you, are, you are trying to conceal it because people might think you're crazy. Because not many people understand what joy is like. People are used to, to sadness and are used to, no, 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 no. Joy begins to flow. Nothing about the tree yet. This is just a river flowing. This is just a river flowing. So, so in, in, in the midst of challenges, you're asking the Lord to remove it, but he's just bringing you joy. He's giving you joy. You're saying, remove it. I don't want it. He's not, he's not listening to He's just bringing you joy. He's tickling you. You're laughing. And then you stop laughing. And then people are coming, giving you messages. The Lord said, your change is coming. It hasn't come. It's coming. It's coming. Then peace. 
There's peace. There's peace. Instead of the worry from before, you suddenly realize, you know what? Who cares? Who cares? I've done the best I can do. I'm not going to kill myself. No. Peace begins to flow. Before when your money is running out, God forbid it will never run out, then you, you already you are, you are you're getting anxious and anxious, but now you're just at peace. And you're wondering, am I becoming nonchalant? No, 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 you are becoming peaceful. You are regaining your lost nature. You are becoming the way it is supposed to be, to be at peace. Because for a real child of God, nothing is meant to move us. We are meant to be standing strong in the midst of challenges. Can I hear a believing amen? Yeah. Long suffering. The ability to continue on in a tough situation, even when you are not seeing a change. <laughs> and then kindness. You know, it's easy to be kind to people that are kind to you. But you then find yourself so, 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 so unkind to you. And then the Holy Ghost will come and tell you to go and say sorry to them. For being unkind to you. And you're wondering, this is unfair. Holy, Holy Spirit, it's because it's you. <laughs> this is unfair. And, and you are trying to argue your way out of it. And he's not listening. He says, I told you to go and say you're sorry. But Lord, I am not sorry. No, I'm telling you <laughs> to go and say <laughs> you are sorry. And you're wondering, what are you doing? Are you trying to humiliate me? They know me as a tough guy, but, but don't, don't, don't make me soft. We say, no, 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 no. Go and say you are sorry. He's walking on your heart. The river is flowing. And then you get into goodness. You, 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 you become a good guy. You, you, you hear of issues and you find yourself wanting to step in to bring about a change. And then you now begin to get into faithfulness. That is that consistency in doing the right things, in doing good things. Now you can be counted on. Before any little thing, you just, you know, you're off. But now you, you stay on. You're faithful, regardless of the situation. You now find yourself saying atrocious things like, Lord, even if you don't show up, I'll still keep serving you. And you're wondering, oh, did I? <laughs> did I just say that? No, you begin to say those things because now you're realizing that the God you serve controls time. I said in the first service, you see, you see uh, um, Adam did not understand he was getting old. Oh, God. You know, I don't even have a wife. Look at my age. See, white hair. See, you, he, he wasn't. Is there any? No. <laughs> he wasn't looking at any of those things. Why? Because he wasn't concerned about that. You get to that point now where you just, you, all you want to do is just to serve the interests of the kingdom of God. Wherever he has deployed you, the, the, the river is flowing. People around are trying to understand why is she happy? We don't see anything. We don't see any tree, no fruit, nothing. But the, the river is flowing. Just let them, tell them to wait. Tell them to wait. Tell them to wait. Even though it tarries, wait for it. It shall not tarry. The God we serve, he has a road map. You see, when we don't understand the road map, that's when we get disappointed. We get discouraged. I heard the message many years ago by an awesome man of God about seeing the invisible. And he said many times people drop out of the race because they don't see what is coming. They don't see what is coming. Why do we invest? We invest because we are hoping for greater returns than what we put in. And that knowledge is helping you stay on in that investment. But people that don't have the knowledge, they sell off. Because stock market is going down, it's going like this, going like this, going like this. Then they quickly sell off. But people that make lots of money, they do their research ahead of time and they stay on. And they realize that over time, if you made the right choices, everything will just be going up. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. The river of life begins to flow. Let's go to verse 23 now. Verse 23. Gentleness. And I know so many people... That, that this describes. They used to be very, 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 very mouthy. They used to be very aggressive. They used to be very stubborn, you know, 
not strong wheels, stubborn. They, 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 they used to be. <laughs> but now they are just very cool. I know someone before he came to Christ and allowed Jesus to begin to walk on him. He was a street fighter. You, you, you touch him the wrong way, be ready to settle a fight. Before the settlement, one or two teeth, tooths would have dropped out. <laughs> Amen. Just for free. That was his nature. <laughs> that you don't provoke the bear, just leave him alone. But then he gave his life to Christ. And he just happened to also to be very big. And then he became like, like a, a bear that is now hugging, not to kill, but just to give love. Gentleness. You find yourself realizing, even though I can destroy somebody, I choose not to destroy them. I heard a story, true or false, I don't know, but, you know, these two friends were fighting, were, were having an argument in the open. And one really, really bashed the other one, and he just kept quiet. He kept quiet, he didn't say anything. After everything, and they left. Then the one that was being mean came back and said, now I know you're a true friend. Even with everything I did, you didn't say the things I was thinking you were going to say. The information you had about me that you could have said that would have damaged me, you didn't say it. That's gentleness. You realize that those that are not fighting back are not necessarily doing it because they are weak, but because they are more powerful than you. It takes power to control power. Amen. Amen. And only the river of the Holy Ghost can do that. We are not quiet because we can't talk. And I'm speaking for those that are under the influence of the Holy Ghost. We are quiet because we've not received permission yet to slap you back. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the, in the spirit. In the spirit is very important. That's the important part. <laughs> and then it leads me to the last one here. Self-control. Where you find yourself, you know, I say that the fact that you can do something does not mean you have to do it. And it's the river that helps you and I. It puts us in check because you know that you are under someone's government. You have a boss. You have a boss. This is that river. So, so things are reset. Then the river now begins to flow. Then it takes us to the very important topic of obedience that's under the ministry of the river, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you now realize that many instructions are coming not because of the outcome, but because he just wants to, you to know how to obey instructions. You now begin to realize when God says, go and do something, he's not saying it will work. That's why he's saying go and do it. He's, he's saying go and do it because I am telling you to go and do it. You see people join cults and all that, and they'll tell them, go and kill someone. Go and do this thing. So they want to see whether you are tr you've truly come under their government. And the devil learned those things from the kingdom of God. Obedience. Abraham, take your son, your only son, the one you love, not Ishmael. Go and sacrifice him. And then the Lord is watching. Obedience. If you have ever seen the process of bridling a horse or bringing a horse into submission to begin to win races, you understand that the process is a painful process, but yet very gainful. Yet, many Christians hardly even get to this point of the journey. But we've not gotten to the good part yet. Oh, we've not gotten there yet. The tree is the good part. But here, you're already beginning to enjoy things. You get to the point of obedience. 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 Because the only proof of submission is obedience. Not your ability to repeat the instruction. Because <laughs> that's where many of us, all we do. We, can re we wrote it down clearly. We can repeat this. The Lord said I should do this and this and this. Have you done it? Not yet, but I want you to know the Lord told me. The Lord God Almighty told me. <laughs> Obedience. 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 And that is what Jesus Christ was taking through. All these things we can see in the life of Christ. Luke chapter 4. Luke 
chapter 4, from verse 1. Are we still together? Luke chapter 4, from verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the river flowing now, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit, driven by the Spirit into abundance, Mm -mm. into the wilderness. Driven. It's very easy for you to say the Lord spoke to you to go and ask someone for money. It's easy. (laughs) Has he spoken to you to give someone before? Or you shut that one down? I was praying. The Lord said, I should come and ask you, there's something you have to give me. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) How about the Lord speaking to you to go and give? If someone came to you and said, oh, the Lord said, um, I should, you know, just... Withdraw everything from my account and give it to you. You'll be like, the Lord said, oh, Jesus. I've always known that I am serving the right Lord. (laughs) But can he give you that kind of an instruction? I don't know anybody here, perhaps you're here, you've not revealed yourself yet, that will will challenge them and say, are you sure it was the whole of your account? Are you sure it wasn't all your accounts, only one account? (laughs) Who would accept it? He was driven into the wilderness to prove his obedience. When you have two of this, it is relatively easy to obey an instruction to give one of it. But when you have one of it, and he says you give that one of it that you have it, that one, then you now wonder, you now begin a funeral ceremony. Oh my God. How I love you, Mike. <laughs> you mourn for 40 days. You still haven't obeyed. But the Lord is going somewhere. He's going somewhere. He's taking you somewhere. He's taking you somewhere. He was driven into the wilderness to prove his obedience. Verse 2 now. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. How can God take you to the devil and leave you there? I say, don't, I'll be right back. Just, I'll be back in a jiffy. (laughs) And then it's 40 days. Being tempted by the devil, being bashed, no food. Being bashed by the devil. Ah, it's easy to get to John 17, verses 1 to 5. And Jesus was glorified and, and said, Father, give me the glory that I had before the time. It's easy to get there. But this is, the, this is the, the road. This is the route to get there. Now, you're being trained in the art of obedience. You are told ten things. You, you miss one and do nine. You are scolded. And you're like, ah, ah, but that's 90%. And he said, no, 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 no. You miss one. You're wondering, this is, I've not seen this side of you before. This is wickedness. No, it is goodness. Are we together? The river of life, the Holy Ghost, will train us into submission. You know how Esther and the other virgins were being groomed in order to go and meet the king? That's the job of the Holy Ghost. He's training us. This father you, you've submitted to, these are the things he likes. He loves obedience. He, he's addicted to obedience. Complete obedience. Let me show you. Let me show you. And he's training us. And he's training us. Oh, you missed it. No, go and do it again. And you're like, no, but I've tried again. Go and do it again. He's training us and training us and training us. In order to get to a point of mastery in obedience. Go and ask Abraham, he'll tell you. Go and ask Isaac, he'll tell you. Go and ask Jacob or Israel, he'll tell you. Ask Daniel, he'll tell you. Ask Joseph, he'll tell you. Ask Esther, she'll tell you. Ask Ruth, she'll tell you. The river begins to flow. The river begins to flow. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, the river is good, but we cannot survive on water alone. It is why I tell people, when you're having an experience in God, don't let it end until you get a word. 
Because the river, when it's flowing, it feels good, it's refreshing. You're taking a shower, you're drinking water. The Bible says, like, like cold water on a hot day is good news from abroad. It's, it feels good. But the river is not the end. The tree is the end. Glory to God. Hmm. Psalm 46 and verse 4. Zika tu palaki sukatia. Lambros kandara mashanda. Psalm 46 verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She shall not be moved. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Why at the break of dawn? Because the river is training you and I into obedience. If you're into working out and lifting weights and you do it the right way, you go to a gym for whatever reason and, and there are people there helping you, they'll tell you that you keep lifting to a point where the weight has to be lifted off you. You keep pushing. Some people never get to this point because they just do the one they can lift. But you, you, you push till somebody has to come and lift it up for you. They say no pain, no gain. This might be someone to excuse now why they won't go to the gym again. <laughs> because of what I just said. No pain. No. So, so they, you keep pushing and pushing until you cannot put it back yourself. That's why we wait till the break of dawn. Every time it's pushing you to the edge of what you can believe God for. I don't think you're here. Every time the Holy Ghost will push you and I to the... You see, except you have a trainer, you don't know what you are capable of doing. Ah, you don't know what you're capable of doing. I don't know what I am capable. That is why Jesus said, when he, the helper, has come, he will guide you, he will help you, he will lead you into all truth. Because the Holy Ghost knows, no, no, you have more capacity than this. Push again. Push again. Push again. Push again. You say, oh, I'm dying. Push again. <laughs> I don't think I can make it. Just push again. I don't know how we're going to get through this time. Just push again. And somehow, miraculously, you got through. Hello? Whew, that was close. I knew I could do it. It's a lie. You didn't know you could do it. And his job is to push and push and push. And the next thing you know, you see, you don't realize you're getting brighter and brighter. It is when others are looking at you. And they're like, ah, your countenance has changed. Your countenance has changed. When Moses came down from the mountain, he didn't know he was shining. It was people around that said, oh my goodness, your, your, your face is shining. Your face is shining. You don't know your words are changing. You don't know your attitude is changing. People around you before they knew you, the moment they did one little thing, you just, you know, you just blow your lid off. You become uncontrollable. But now, it, it took a while before you got there. You're like, oh my goodness, this, this person is changing. He'll help her just at the break of dawn. At the break of dawn. Right when, right when the cow is about to be repossessed. I'm bringing it home now. Right at that, at that threshold, that limit. And you just step in. I remember when he said we should embark on this renovation project. We did not have the money in the account. But he said, keep on going. And, and we went and, and we're like, okay, okay, I think, I think this, 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 this is working good now. This is working good. One of us here works with one of the painting companies. She spoke to her, her, her bosses and made some, God granted us favor. And, you know, we got lots of paint at a very cheap I mean, things were happening. God is good. And then the contractor messed up. It was almost as if it reset us back again. And I said, Holy Spirit, what? this is not our agreement. And he said, go back to the messages you were listening to before. Go back. You need more. You need more power. Go back to that. And we can see this now. 
came in here and, and, and hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the people working here, they are very bougie. They like expensive things. All the teams is high end, this high end, that high. End. The drums is a different one now. Over three thousand dollars. I said, didn't you find a six hundred dollar drums? <laughs> didn't you find seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred? Why three thousand? Say, Pastor, because you know this one when you kick it. <laughs> Amen. And God kept providing and providing, and He still provided. And I know somebody will come and say, Pastor, this is a land. This is land for free for the church. I know that. I know that. The land that your family has been holding for generations that you are not using for anything. <laughs> you are not using for anything. Anything. Maybe if you've not had the dream, receive that dream now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The tree of life. The, 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 the river of life prepares us for the tree of life. There, there is the abundance that you cannot handle, I cannot handle, except we have been prepared. Some people don't know what pride is until blessings come. You don't know you are proud yet. You don't know. You don't know. You don't. You don't. You don't. Ah, you don't. Ah, you don't. You don't. You don't. Until you afford I won't mention any car, car, you know, afford some cars that they think is very expensive. And then you show up somewhere and people just begin to say, oh, my goodness. Oh, and you, and you just feel yourself being elevated. And you're like, ah, where's the ground? <laughs> and they just begin to give you some crazy respect. And you're like, ah, this is good, though. Where has all this thing? This is my destiny. <laughs> this is the way it's supposed to be. You see, <laughs> you don't understand what pride is. If you have not been schooled by the Holy Spirit, you'll be proud when you get blessed. I can assure you. I remember in the ministry where we were before, awesome place, before the Lord asked us to transition. I'll be given a few opportunities to minister on Sunday. And one of such opportunities, the whole place was packed. And the Lord sent his word and mighty things happened. Eh, all kinds of things. And I mean, it was fantastic. Fantastic. Amen. <laughs> After the service, the pastor was not there. After the service, people were coming to me. Oh, amazing message. Amazing message. And that's not the kicker. I got to the entrance. The pastor used to greet people at the entrance. So as a youth pastor, I was also doing that. And then this man came. They used to sell CDs of the message there. So this man came and he, he said, see, I, I bought the CD of this message. I usually don't buy the CDs. So which means even when my pastor then will preach, he won't buy the CD. But me, small boy, preached. He bought the CD. And I said, oh, we bless God. So he left. He came back again. The pastor's picture was on the CD. He said, it should not be the pastor's picture. It should be your picture. Because you preach the message. I said, what devil is this? I, I said, no, no, no. It's a pastor's picture that will be there. He said, ah, you're right, you're right. He went. He came back again. He came. Uh, till today, it's almost as if I was dreaming. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost. It, it was like I was in a cocoon. I was observing him, but I was not partaking of what he was doing. He came back again. I said, you know what? I, I think your picture should be on this side. And his picture should be on this side. Because you preach the message. I said, no, his picture will be on every side. But I noticed something. When the, I, I was done ministering and the power of God was moving and we're done and people began to clap, I felt something inside me. I said, so this is what Nebuchadnezzar felt. <laughs> when he was standing in Babylon, I said, look at the Babylon I've created. It was almost as if it was in slow motion. <gasps> I am telling you, so it's <laughs> some people have not seen greatness because they, they died before their time. Somebody said, don't let people clap you into your grave. And I felt that thing. While they were there celebrating, clapping, I was there trusting God for my salvation. 
Because I realized that, oh my goodness, this is very dangerous. Not what they were doing, but my response to it. And I didn't plan it. Before then, I thought I was completely humble. 100%. <laughs> After that, I went back to the place of prayer and the word. to say, Lord, that thing, I don't ever want to see that thing again. You see, the river is there to prepare you and I for the blessings. Most of the civilizations then that thrived were by the riverside. Because they understood what came with being by the river. Let the river of the Holy Ghost perfect his, his work in you. Let the work be perfected. Where you are going, you are too sensitive for where you are going. And the Lord can build you and strengthen you for where you are going. You're too sensitive for where you're going. So he has to keep you and keep the river flowing to toughen and strengthen you without making you mean. Some people are too weak for where they're going. He needs you to be strong in the Lord. Because... The, the, the nature of the anointing is based on the terrain that you're going into. Imagine being sent to go and help people, uh, um, you know, in, in a, in a, in a drug-infested neighborhood. I mean, you need to go with the boldness and audacity of faith that God is with me. No demon, no gun fired against me can work. That's the job of the river. You cannot be destroyed when the Lord is guiding you. No. He will save you at the break of dawn. At the break of dawn. At the break of dawn. You say, but, but pastor, is this the way it's going to be always? No. <laughs> you suddenly realize, you see, I, I, when my, because this tree of life has 12 fruits, as we're going to look at in the fourth service. One of the fruits is prosperity, for example. Prosperity meaning that you don't lack money again. I remember when that journey began for me, almost every time I was with God, he would be saying, give, 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 give. He was making me always live on the edge. And I, I, I planned. I planned for when I was young, I, I, I planned. I lend you money. I, have a, I write it down. I'll come for you. <laughs> Give me my money back. They call this thing then. I call it planning. <laughs> planning. So I knew how to manage my resources. But the Lord was trying to teach me that where you're going, it, it, it should not just be your resources. It should not just be your resources. You need to know how to lean on his own resources. So the giving began, give this, give this, give this, give. And nobody was giving back to me. It was frustrating. Every time, give, 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 give. To a point where I almost got traumatized. Anytime I'm going to pray, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give now. Uh, you deserve the glory. Give, okay. <laughs> now, my wife would have handled it, but I'm glad I wasn't married then. So I didn't have to explain to anybody, um, honey, the Lord wants us to give again. <laughs> Remember that car we just bought? The, the Lord wants it to go. I tried to ask for it. I tried to negotiate, but it didn't work. <laughs> so please move your things out of the car. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to have those conversations. Because by the time I got married, I'd already, I won't say graduated, but I'd already advanced in that realm. So we now had moved to another step in the process. At the break of dawn, you are always being led to honor, honor, honor everybody, and God is allowing this honor from everywhere. And you're wondering, when is this honor at the sowing going to come back? At the break of dawn. Love, 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 love. Yet nobody's loving you back at the break of dawn. One thing I know about this Heavenly Father that we serve is he does not, he knows how to keep records. He knows how to keep 
record. Psalm 20 says, may the Lord remember your offerings. And not just monetary offerings. Offerings of obedience. He told you to do, you did. He told you to do, you did. Maybe you didn't do everything. Then that's where you lean on the finished work of Christ. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I didn't follow this instruction. He told me since two years ago to go to school. This two years, I have not gone. Please have mercy. I'm going now. Okay, I'll go 2023. No, go now. <laughs> I'm going now. <laughs> That's why you lean on the mercies of God. The mercies of God. The mercies of God. Amen. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. The river. Another aspect of the river's job is in Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Jesus. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The river of wisdom, the river of understanding, the river of counsel, the river of might, the river of knowledge, and the river of the fear of God. A very quick recap, we started with the breath of life. That is where everything started, the breath of life, the breath of life. The, our Heavenly Father breathed the breath of life into us and made us living beings. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, living beings. He made us living beings. We came alive. We came alive. We came alive. Hallelujah. And then we go to verse 8 and verse 9. The same one. And the Bible says, and the Lord planted a garden where the food was, and he put man where the food was. Which means that wherever God puts you is where there is good, there is good. And is where there is food. Is where there is, is where there is gold. Is where the blessings are. He never puts his children outside of where the blessings are. Because he's a loving father. He did not put all this together for worldly people to enjoy as it were. It is mainly for his children to enjoy. Am I talking to somebody today? Which means there are times where we find ourselves. It is not your profession that is feeding you. I hope we understand that. Because some people pursue this degree and, and this, 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 this degree and, 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 and that profession. But it is the Lord that gives that blessings. He makes us rich and he adds no sorrow to it. There was a time they said there's money in IT. IT. It's not everybody in IT that is seeing the money. Oh, there's money in nursing. Not everybody there has seen the money. I hope you know that. So the journey began from the Garden of Eden. And look at something very interesting. The Bible says, in this same verse, there were two major trees that the Bible decided to single out. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge. What a long name. No wonder he said, don't eat from there. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A mouthful. Other than the tree of life. Amen. And now, this tree of life was not touched by Adam and Eve for whatever reason. They didn't know that they needed life. They didn't know what they could have gotten from it. Until the devil showed up and misdirected them. I've heard people say, oh... You want to get married and all you do is just go to church? I mean, and I'm wondering, how is your mind? How is it? What's the makeup of your mind? <laughs> what's, the, what's the genetic makeup? What's the, what's the wisdom makeup? You say, oh, you know, I, I, you're looking for a spouse. You, you need to go to places. All you do is go to work and then you go home. And then you go to the grocery store. Walk home. No, no. And I'm thinking, don't you know that it is God that makes rich? That makes a person sin. You can keep hopping and jumping and screaming. Nobody will see you. Except the Lord makes you known. Just like you can apply for jobs and apply, 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 apply. And it's like you're just dropping your resume into a black hole. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you wonder, you look, you print it out and say, this is real. This is a real resume. <laughs> What's going on? But when God makes you known and causes you to be seen, 
Suddenly, you begin to get an email back. And when the Lord turned again our captivity, we're like them that dream. They say, come for an interview. You are reading it properly. He says, sister, come and read this. Is this an interview? Because you're not used to getting responses like that. Wherever God puts you an eye is where there is life. But they did not touch the tree of life. They went to good and evil. And the meaning of that is they got exposed to justice. The concept of justice. Which made them begin to challenge God's direction, his authority, his instruction, because now they think they know better. Now, there's a reason why God did not want them to eat that fruit. Because he wanted to keep them in a place of calm. And I said in both services that you will know you have eaten from good and evil because you are now stressed. The moment you realize that stress is a daily occurrence, it means that you have eaten from the knowledge of good and evil, from that tree. Worry, anxiety, you are alive today, but you're worried about dying tomorrow. But you're alive today. Worried about everything because you know too much. So rest becomes when you cease to know and be in a state where you cast your cares upon him. The Bible says cast your cares upon Jesus and he will give you rest. Imagine if we could reverse what Adam and Eve did. That is what Jesus Christ came to do, among other things. We are so aware of everything, but he wants to take all those cares away and bring us to, bring us to a point of neutrality. Now, if we fail to understand the mistakes of the past, we'll find ourselves repeating them. That is why Paul the Apostle in Philippians chapter 3 said, if you want to know my secret, this is my secret. All the things that I have, I've chosen to count them as nothing so that I can reach on and attain to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Philippians chapter 3, that's what Paul said. He listed some of his credentials. Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day, Pharisee of Pharisees, and this, and this, trained under one of the best teachers in those days. But he chose to put aside the credentials just so that he can lay on, hold on Christ. What, the, what is he trying to say? You see, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. The moment man ate from the tree of good and evil, God said they must not be allowed to touch the tree of life. If you want life, you need to give up the fruit that is already in your mouth from the tree of good and evil. We cannot have both at the same time. You cannot worry, I want to have life. It cannot happen. You choose. Adam and Eve chose worry. They chose stress. And the Lord said, if that's the case, you cannot live long. They chose worry, and the Lord said, if that's the case, you cannot live long. You cannot touch life. If you want to know good and evil, you cannot touch life. So it is one or the other. And then we went on to talk about the river of life. And the river is the Holy Ghost. The river's job is after you've been stripped of those credentials you think you have, or you have laid them down yourself, then the river, the Holy Ghost, comes to begin to prepare you for the abundance. And we talked about the fruit of the Spirit and how the Holy Ghost comes systematically to take us through a process of renewal, rejuvenation, strengthening, empowerment to prepare us for the reef, for the tree of life. He begins to build the nature of love on the inside of you. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. He begins to build a nature of joy. Before now, you are only happy when you get a good deal. Before now, you're only happy when you get a job or when something happens. But he begins to build joy, not tied to any, any occurrence. Everything seems to be the same, but your joy is multiplying and increasing. There are some people here, they didn't have a job for over two years. Yet, they were more joyful than some people that were going to work every day. More joyful. Because if they are not complaining about the boss, they complain about the boss's wife or husband, they complain about the boss's children, they complain, 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 and it's their drive to work. I mean, they will find all kinds of things. It is joy. Let the river of the Holy Ghost work those things out in you. Sometimes it takes time, but let that work be done. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. That's the river. That's the river begins to flow. And the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. It begins to flow. It begins to flow. And then you get to a point where the river is doing its job. Then a seed is planted in your heart for the tree of life to begin to grow. (laughs) I said in the second service that... um, I'm so excited because it is one thing to know how to get people started by getting them saved. It's another thing to know how to take them through to the destination. These messages I roadmapped from start to finish, from cradle to grave, in our walk with God. Some people started and they dropped out. Some people started and only stayed in the space of the river, just building the fruit of the Spirit. But no, no tree of life. They cannot give life to anybody. But yet, they are good people. So you hear people say things like, and this person was a good Christian. But they are still broke. And my, their parents were good people. But then, still sick. And this was good. They pray a lot. And you hear people say things like that. Because this, it's a journey. Well, for whatever reason, they got stuck on a part of the journey. Maybe nobody ever told them there are more steps ahead. Or maybe they told them, but they refused to go ahead. But this is not the end. This is not the end. You can be a good person and be very good and very broke. You can be very, very good and still very sick. And still be praying. What is lacking is the tree of life. And then, as the river is flowing, then seeds will now be sown. And the seed, according to the parable of the sower, is the word of God. The seed only bears fruit when it is sown on a ready heart. And only the river of the Holy Ghost can prepare your heart and my heart. I've heard people that have listened and listened for five years. We've been preaching about giving, receiving, giving. It was the fifth year. She said, oh, pastor, now I understand. And I said, oh, my God. So all this while we've been saying it and saying it and saying it, what happened? The heart was not yet ready. Love, love, love. But they don't understand. But when the heart is ready, somehow they'll hear it and say, oh, my goodness. I am meant to walk in love. Duh. I was supposed to say that inside, but it came outside. <laughs> but you heard it, amen. We meant to walk in love. Then the seed now begins to give us access to the tree. Now, now, let's go to Revelation chapter 22 from verse 1. Hmm. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the lamb, it came from God. <laughs> oh, in the middle of a street and on either side of the river, there's a reason why it's in the middle. 
Paul, we'll leave that part. You can meditate on that. Was a tree of life which bore 12 fruits. Each tree yielding its fruit every month. Every single month. Every single month. Every single month. Glory. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Fruit and then the leaves. This is why we have themes every month. Because we are sowing seeds on the ready hearts every month. So they can bear fruit every month. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 1 and verse 3 was talking about, let's start from verse 1 actually. Psalm 1 and verse 1. The first psalm, the first verse. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In essence, blessed is the man who has allowed the river to walk on him. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the seed of the word of God. He meditates on the seed day and night because now he has been delivered from worry, anxiety. I said in the second service that the Lord told me some people's diet every day is one hour, 30 minutes of worry. Two hours of anxiety in the morning and then they get to afternoon. Another hour of worry, another hour of anxiety. They they pick up from where they left off in the previous service. Worry service in the, in the first service in the morning, in their own morning. But suddenly you are delivered from those things and you realize, oh my goodness, I have time. I have time. I have time. So you can now meditate on the word day and night. Day and night. What are you doing? You are building trees, the tree of life. We're going to look at the different fruits shortly. He shall be like a tree planted by, you see the rivers of water again? Planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Glory to Jesus. And whatever he does shall prosper. This is the end result we are getting to. Whatever you do shall prosper. Bearing fruit in the right season. Every time you're bearing fruit, every time when it's time to walk, you're walking. Every time you're bearing fruit. And you see, the amazing thing is this. When you walk with God and the river is flowing through you, you would understand your own times and seasons. One big mistake that many of us make, the Bible says, he who compares himself with another is not wise. We might have finished school at the same time. It doesn't mean we follow the same time. You have your season, I have my season. What is guaranteed? If you follow God, you get to the destination <laughs> with distinction. That is what is guaranteed. So some will get out of school and right away they get into school again for their master's degree. Praise Jesus. Celebrate them. And after that, no gap. They get into PhD and they are called a doctor. Praise Jesus. Amen. Another's path is not to go to school. They begin a business. And they begin to, to put in their effort. And they spend 10 years building the business. And then the school comes and gives them a honorary degree. Honorary PhD. Guess what? They have both arrived at the same destination. Didn't Steve Jobs have a, 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 a honorary degree? Honorary degree. You have a PhD. Who will come and say, hey, sir, was your own honorary or... <laughs> Corona, Corona, <laughs> did you work for years? No. All that matters is now I am DR, doctor. That's all that matters. The destination is the same, but the pathway is different. Oh, yes, we're born in the same family. So, so what? Do you have the same DNA? Uh, the, the, the same uh, thumbprint? No. Amen, somebody. Ah, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, 
So how do we get to the level of the tree? Let the Holy Ghost walk his walk in you. Then when the seed of the word is planted, it germinates. Not every soil is fruitful. Our heart is a soil. When the Holy Ghost has walked on your heart, when you hear the word, it sticks. It sticks. And on a daily basis, the Holy Ghost is feeding and watering that word. And it begins to grow. And it begins to grow. You know, when you plant a seed, you don't immediately see a tree. It goes back to times and seasons. People might be wondering and laughing at you. I thought you said you were going to plant. Ha, 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 ha. We don't see anything. No, you don't see seeds. You see trees. I'm telling you why many people get discouraged, disappointed, because they don't understand the process. I was saying to someone the other day, and also yesterday, imagine, we all know it takes nine months for a woman to give birth. Imagine if you didn't know that, and you were so in a hurry. I want this to come. It's, it's been two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, and people are looking at you and say, are you crazy? It's been two weeks, Yeah. I mean, there are some women, the, the tummy is very big. You see, you see, it's big. This is evidence. Doctor, remove this baby. But it's just been three months. But we all know, so we are waiting. People might not see it, but you know it's there, and we're just waiting. And you're waiting. One month to two months, three months, and then it begins to show. Now, some people are thinking, oh, now it's there. Bring it out. No, don't, don't you dare touch it. And you're going four months, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the mother is saying, this, your lease has expired. <laughs> your lease, it is time for you to come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Times and seasons. If you're talking about trees, we need to understand that we serve a God of times. Your time is not the same as mine. No, it's not the same. No. Two churches can start at the same time. One can grow, blossom, and another can remain because they are, they are both doing the same things. Another can remain seemingly stuck. <laughs> Only for them to get to the fifth year and there's an explosion. Times and seasons. Don't let the devil tempt you like he tempted Eve. To look into another person's garden. The grass is always greener on the other side. You hear people say things like, all my friends are getting married. Really? All your friends? All your, all your friends? All of them? All of them? All your Facebook friends? One thousand of them? <laughs> he said, no, pastor, that's not, you know, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. Because you're exaggerating, you're lying. You have eaten the fruit the devil has given you has put you on an unnecessary speed, unrealistic speed. Everybody's getting jobs. Really, everybody? Go to the unemployment office. <laughs> There's a reason why it's called the unemployment. <laughs> you, see, you see people say, I've been looking for work for 10 years. I say, ah, 10 years? You how long? 15 years? You how long? I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. Because... <laughs> Oh, Jesus. The tree of life, the seed is planted. The seed is planted. Now, let's look at a few scriptures that helps us to solidify this truth. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Proverbs 13, 12. We're getting to the very, very root of the matter now. Hope defers makes the heart sick. But when desire comes... It is a tree of life. Hmm. When this, what does this mean? When desire comes. So do we have to wait for fulfillment? No. Faith can give you that desire before the desire becomes reality. When desire comes, either through the eyes of faith or through the naked natural eyes, 
When desire comes, it is, not it is like, it is a tree of life. So what does that mean? When the seed, and we're going to look at some of the fruits, mainly in the fourth service, but when the, the, the seed is planted, you can begin to see your tree from the moment it is planted through the eyes of faith. <laughs> that is to say, I've seen us ministering to hundreds of thousands of millions of people already. It has become to me a tree of life. Because that desire has come already in my spirit. It is already a tree of life. If God told you to start a business... What are you expecting? Don't you know that you should expect the best of the best of the best because you serve a God that does nothing but distinction and perfection? It must become, you, you, you've, you've just gotten into school. Are you expecting you not finish? So the tree of life for you should be, I have already finished successfully. It's already a tree of life. When desire comes, you heard those two testimonies, one in the second service about the issue of blood that was, that was stopped, first service, I think, and then we also heard the one about faith today in this third service. When you have faith, you're not looking at tomorrow. Tomorrow is now. When you are dealing with faith, there's no tomorrow. Everything is now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. When you are dealing with faith, there's no tomorrow. Tomorrow is today. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 6. Ah, le kapa liko sikataya. Sorry, 11 verse 6. Sorry, 11 6. Now, ketushka, but without faith, it is impossible We'll go to verse 2 shortly. To please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder, which means he's able to take you to the destination he has promised to take you to, of those who diligently seek him. Now let's go to verse 1 and then verse 2. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now faith is the substance of things Hope for now, now, not tomorrow. Faith is now, not faith will be. Faith is now, 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 now. So if you are being prayed for to be healed, when is your healing? Now, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Now, today, now. It's the evidence of things you have not seen. But when desire is fulfilled, it becomes a tree of life. So we sow the seed, but you must see the tree. We sow the seed, but you and I must see the tree, but we sow the seed. When the Lord gave me the logo for the ministry in the vision, and, and, and I was asking for the different pieces, what does this color mean, this color? And he said, the black is how dark the world is. And the dove there is white because that's the Holy Spirit's representation. And then the green in his mouth is, is, the, is the life. Is the life. Is the life that we are carrying through the darkness of the earth. <laughs> Restoration and transformation. And that's what happened with Noah. When they got to a point where he was trying to confirm whether the water has receded. He sent the dog and he came back with a leaf in his mouth. And they knew, yes, there's restoration. That's what we're there for. Amen. 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 For by faith, you as an elder, because to the angels, they see you as an elder. We've obtained a good testimony. You obtain a good testimony in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 11.30. So, so we see, we see, we see the, we are looking at different components now making the tree grow or to make it stunted in every individual's life. 
So you cannot but have faith. That's why I love those two testimonies. They've been hearing the messages, but then this time they decided to have faith. It means that you can have faith. It is a choice. Like you flip a switch, you can decide to quit thinking from a human perspective and begin to look at it from a godly perspective. God is higher than me. If God says this will happen, is it not wisdom to believe it will happen? I choose to believe. It has happened. I believe it has happened. I'm saying to somebody now that has not yet gotten an interview, you get a job tomorrow. Yeah. Pastor, how can it happen? That is why you're, you, you were stuck. Where? Where? We're stuck. <laughs> ah, have you not seen cases where you go for an interview and right there at the interview, you are being offered the job? Amen. Not because it's a bad job, because you're a good person. Why? Because the Lord has made you favored. He will surround the righteous with favor as with a shield. I've been in cases where a job was going to open up. I was told to write the job description for myself. My own story. Write the job description to match your skill. Of course, you match my skill set. If I'm writing, <laughs> I wrote it and it was posted. And there were interviews. I, I pitied the people that came for interviews. All dressed up with their suitcase. I said, ah, it's my job. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> Went through all the charade. At the end of the day, you know, yeah, well, you know, I can imagine though some people got the emails. If I could have told them, I would have told them, don't waste your time. You see, favor is not fair. Favor is not fair. When God chooses to favor, it's not fair. In the story I told now, somebody else, from their own perspective, you see, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. Thank God for your life. But I was the recipient, and I'm telling you, it is fair. <laughs> and when you are the recipient, you'll be, you'll be smiling. Imagine someone came to ask you out. Is that not unfair? Out of all the other people in the world. Is that not unfair? Shouldn't you tell him or her and say, no, no, let's be fair. Please go around first <laughs> and come back to me when you're finished with everybody. You said yes, and that made the world unfair. <laughs> Don't tell me it's unfair. Man. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. So one of the things that helps a tree to grow is faith. Believe that God is able to do what he has said he will do. When he said he would do it. How he said he would do it. Number two. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Proverbs 11 and verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Righteousness is one of the things that helps the tree of life to be activated in our lives. Where there is no righteousness, the, whole, the, the devil can come and condemn a person and it would affect their confidence. And instead of going forward, they will retreat and go backwards. He can put them in a corner through shame. Now, righteousness is not the same as perfection. There's nothing like perfection. It's a, it's a, it's a mirage. So, in the New Testament era, righteousness means having faith in the finished work of Christ for your sake. That is righteousness. Jesus has made you right. The knowledge of that would, would boost your abilities and your, will give you grace to walk in light of God's will. In the Old Testament, righteousness was by works. You do it, and then they'll mark your script, and they'll say righteous or not righteous. In the New Testament, you look at the script that Jesus already marked, answered on your behalf. And that is what will make you and I righteous. So which means, I can still be in the state where I'm still trying to stabilize myself and my habits. And still be claiming the righteousness of Christ. 
Religious people will tell you that's not possible, but I prefer the Bible. The Bible tells me that that is very... Po- he looked at the woman that was caught in adultery and said, where are your accusers? Where are the church members? Not cornerstone members. Where are, the, where are those accusers of yours? And he said, they are no more. Then go. I don't have anything against you. Just make sure you don't sin anymore. If it were some church people, they would take them through 10 classes for cleansing. <laughs> cleansing number one, cleansing from this, cleansing from that. And then the 10 class, you assess, are you really cleansed? Mm. <laughs> Go back to class one. Jesus was speaking with, with, with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. When he was talking to her, she was still deep in adultery. What's the essence of the New Testament if you are still waiting for your works in order to believe that you are righteous? Why did Jesus die? Why did he die? I feel like we'll keep arguing this thing. I'm not arguing with anybody. I know the truth. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. It depends on who you listen to. One day you believe, another day you hear somebody else say something, and then they convince you, and then you, no, 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 no. no. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. So the way I confess other things, I confess and declare I am righteous. Because the moment I begin to rely on my seemingly good works, pride has kicked in already. Because I prayed in the course of the night at 2 a.m. and prayed for two hours and vibrated. So (laughs) I'm good. I'm sure if I ask anything in his name, he'll answer. Because I've prayed. Oh, I fasted. <laughs> Just wait. 21 days. <laughs> 21. I'm, I'm just, I can't, can't you see? This is the result from 21 days of fasting. And I might go to 40 days. We'll see. And the Lord is just navigating some things in my spirit. Those things are good. We do them. But my righteousness must never be based on those things. I've been fighting since before I was born. Good luck. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) Righteousness is one of the things that helps, gives us access to the tree of life. I am right. Let me hear you say, I am right before God. If you have given your life to Christ, if you are not born again, you are not right. You are unright. But we can make you right. I'm talking about those who have given their lives to Jesus. You have made the confession of faith then what you do next is believe that Jesus has paid the price for you. Do your best, but don't rely on your best. Do your best, but don't rely on your best. Rely on his best. You know, there are two types of sin. Let me remind us. There are two types. There's there's a sin of omission, and there's a sin of commission. Just big legal terminologies, but omission means the sin that you sinned because you did not know you sinned. But you still sin. Then there is a sin of commission, which means the things you know you were not to do, but you did them. That's where you have adultery, fornication, all those common, common sins. So now, if you want to go by your works, you can try and be good in the area of commission, but how about omission? How about the things you did wrong that you did not even know were wrong? How about those ones? And you're going about with fake confidence because you did not, because you didn't commit adultery, no fornication, you don't watch porn, you don't do all that, you see, <laughs> I'm good. No, 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 no. How about omission? And it's when you heard the message, three years later you realize, ah, so this is a sin. But you have been committing it. Not knowing. I'll give you an example. Do you know dishonor is a sin? And if you don't know what is honor to me, and you still keep doing it, you've still dishonored me, even though you did not know. And you have still sinned against God. That is why we must rely on what Jesus has done. He has made you righteous. He has made me righteous. So faith and then righteousness. Number three, And he says, he who wins souls is wise. He who wins souls is wise. This is why we win souls. We share. Let people know 
about Jesus. It is one of the ways we enhance our righteousness. The more you tell people about something, the more you believe that something. Oh, yeah. It's a reality. Because of time, let's jump to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 18. Solomon, Solomon was one man that laid hold of the tree of life. That's why all these things we are saying in Proverbs. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. I wonder who is her. Wisdom. So let's replace she and her with wisdom. Wisdom, not every she is a tree of life. But the she they are talking about here is, 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 is the truth, is wisdom. The she's we, we have here are trees of life. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> but not every she is a tree of life. Let's be clear. Some she's have destroyed people. <laughs> I saw a meme where he showed the picture of the way the man was. And then he said, after another picture of how he was, after she asked for a little help. And everything, he lost weight, <laughs> all his money gone. That will not be your portion. Yeah. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain wisdom. So wisdom, so we have faith, we have righteousness, and now we have wisdom. Wisdom is a tree. What is wisdom? Knowing the right things to do and doing it is wisdom. Wisdom is not you are, you are really now scriptures. No. Wisdom is knowing the right things to do. Knowing who to forgive and forgiving them. That's wisdom. No matter how painful it is. Knowing where to be and being there. Knowing what to say and saying it. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Knowing who to honor and honoring them. Knowing who to give to and giving to them. That is wisdom. Knowing the right things to do and doing it. The Bible says, well, what, what is, how do we, how can we tell if a person has wisdom? Is the one that builds his house on the rock. And the rock is the word of God. Not some Instagram ideas. Because they put nice pictures and nice images and you think it's smart. No, no, no. And you're using your life as an experiment. The word of God is ever true. It has lasted from generation to generation to generation to generation. The Bible says, I was young, now I am old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. That is what the word of God can do to us. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. That is wisdom. And wisdom has nothing to do with age. Wisdom means knowing you need to pray and actually praying. You're sitting there. And, and, and you see, this is why the Holy Ghost is the custodian of wisdom. You're doing what you're doing and then he begins to nudge you. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Are you wise? If you're wise, you will listen. You listen. Wisdom is knowing where not to be and not being there. There are some places that a child of God must never be found. Never. Even in a dream, they must never be found there. <laughs> Amen. That is wisdom. It has nothing to do with age. Wisdom. Wisdom. There are some things a child of God must never be found drinking or ingesting or smoking. Mm -hmm. It's wisdom. Some people will pour it in a different container. And you think, oh, you see, I'm so smart. No, you're you are unsmart. But from today, you'll be smart. You, you go and throw those things away. There are some people, they've sent us video clips of that because that was the instruction. They poured out all the gin. They called something spirit and you're drinking it. They call these spirits for a reason. Because it invites spirits into your life. I saw a, a, a clip of someone under the influence of, 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 of is it LSD or, or, or uh, fentanyl. And it looked like the person was under demonic possession. 
I said, this is, this is a demon. This is a demon. Why? A wise person will stay away. What are you looking for? What are you, why are you using your body, your life, your mind? If you lose your mind today, there's no cure except in God. There's no cure. Maybe they should put, you know, they should live stream uh, 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 what life is like in, 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 uh, in, in mental institutions. Just live, you can go online and just connect to a live stream and just see. And then they'll put the tag that this one was fentanyl that brought them here. This one was alcohol. This one was innocent marijuana. And this one was disobeying authority. <laughs> <laughs> you run away. <laughs> you run away from those things. Wisdom. Knowing what to do and actually doing it. That's wisdom. In the fourth service, then we'll get into the 12, the fruits. And by the grace of God, well, we'll package all this together. We'll have it as one video on YouTube. Amen. Can make it available to people. Hallelujah. So you know from start to finish by the grace of God, and there are many things in between, but, but it's really, this is what the journey is like. So wherever you are in that process, you are able to apply some patience, apply some long suffering. You know what? Things are challenging now, but I am still in Christ. No wonder the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. And the Bible also said, all things work together. Why? Because the Lord knows where he's taking you to and where he's taking me to. All things work together for those who are... I mean, everything is working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. And you get to a point where, oh my goodness, now I'm seeing the fruits from the tree of life at work in my life. We said our journey began in Genesis chapter 2. In this sense, when the breath of life was breathed into us. And the Bible said man became a living being. It became a living being with the breath of life inside us. And verse 8 of Genesis 2 and 9 told us, can we have that on screen, please? That the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden and put man in that garden that he planted. And we said again and again and again and again that the action in the garden of Eden was in this garden that the Lord planted. Where he put man was where things were happening. So if God has put you anywhere, that is where it is happening. If God ordained your marriage, don't look elsewhere. If he ordained it, it might be rocky now. The gold will come out tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. If God ordained it, if, if, not you ordaining it, if God ordained it. Verse 9, the Bible told us of the different trees that were in the garden. And lo and behold, there was a tree there called the tree of life, but, the, but Adam and Eve never touched it. And neither did the devil tempt them to touch it because life was good for them. The devil only tempts us to do the things that he knows does not please God and brings destruction to us. The Bible will not tempt you, the, the devil will not tempt you to read your Bible. The devil will not tempt you and say, you know, you know, go and pray. Go and pray. Go on. <laughs> he will not do that. Instead, you say, remember that show? Don't you remember? You've had a long day. You need to kick back and relax. Not that watching shows are bad if they are good shows. Amen. And the journey went on in verse 15. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. Hallelujah. Have that on the screen, please. Then God took man, put him there, and said, keep it, but don't touch the one of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it. 
chapter 3, the devil came and tempted Adam and Eve, and they went and touched it. Eve specifically, not because of any, just to be specific. And then Eve gave Adam the fruit, and they all went down together. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for wonderful wives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Can the wives just shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Giving their husbands good food. <laughs> then we went on to talk about the river. The river everywhere you see the tree of life, you see the river of life. Because it takes the river to sustain the tree. In Ezekiel 47, we saw that there. Revelation 22, we saw that there. Psalm 46, we saw that there. Psalm 1 and verse 3, we saw that there. When you see the river, you see the tree. Where you see the river, you see the tree. Where you see the tree of life, you see the river of life. And that river is the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. So the moment we give our lives to Jesus, we give our lives to him, then he begins that work of purification, which is the opposite of what Adam and Eve did. Imagine if they did not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Imagine if they continued in his rest. Imagine if they were at rest. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, For we who have believed do enter that rest. Where is that rest? The rest is the state of of not knowing good and evil. It looks like you're oblivious, but it's actually a state of rest. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, but that is not us. We have entered his rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Come on now, hallelujah. Verse 9 to 11. He repeated the same thing. There therefore remains, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has, listen to this, has himself seized from his works as God did from his. Not laboring, laboring, hustling. No, no. We just follow instructions. In between instructions, it looks like we're lazy. <laughs> In between instructions, we're resting. We're chill. We just rise up, follow instructions, and leave the rest. Rise up, follow instructions, and it is hard for people that are laboring to believe that, to understand. Imagine if you don't have to apply for 1,000 jobs. You just know the job to apply for. Imagine every program you apply for, you are not wasting application fees. It's exactly the one you need to apply for. You apply and you get it at the right time you need to apply. Imagine what, what, what awesome rest. You just know that no, after two years, you do that. Mm, after five years, this and that. You're just moving according to divine plan. Like the sons of Issachar, knowing times and seasons. Just so lovely. The only girl you asked out, she said yes, and you married her. Isn't life good? Not that you get 20 no's and then one yes and you're shocked. You're like, did you really say yes? Are you just pitying me? Amen. The river begins to flow. And that river begins to walk on our soul. Then the fruit of the Spirit begins to manifest. Of love, of joy, of peace. All these things, the river, the tree has not yet started. We've not gotten there yet. 
the river. And we also said, part of the job of the Holy Ghost is to bring us to a place of obedience to God. And the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. What many people think are fruits, they're actually just breadcrumbs of blessings. Because we are meant to be generational blessings. The Greek Phoenician woman helped us to understand that there's a concept as crumbs. Perhaps many Christians have not seen fruit. It's mainly crumbs. Talk less of the tree itself. But this is the pathway. When we first come to Christ, he rids us of everything so we can depend on him. But that's not the end. If that is where you end, then you suffer on earth and reign in heaven. But then the Holy Ghost comes upon you and I and the river begins to flow. He begins to build the fruit of the Spirit, preparing us for the tree of life. And depending on how yielding you are and I am, we will determine the speed of those events. Begins to impart love and joy and peace and longs all the fruit of the Spirit and the point of obedience. Then we now got to the point of the tree of life. Revelation chapter 22 from verse 1. Oh, beautiful song. I've never seen God fail. No, 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 no. First time I'm hearing that song. Amazing song. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Wait a minute. Didn't you hear that testimony of Jesus healing Severe, I mean, with all the information she gave us and the pulse and everything, in the course of, I mean, look at God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I hope dentists will not lose their jobs. At this rate, we just advertise, you have toothache, toothaches, you don't want to brush anymore. No, no, you still, <laughs> just come to any of our services. Are you supposed to be healed? Amazing God. I'm glad nobody laid hands on her. I mean, not because of the way it was, but I'm just saying that it shows that. <laughs> I'm saying, no, no, don't put me in trouble. I, I'm, I'm innocently just saying that it shows what God can do. When it's just you and God alone, what he can do. That's why one of the best blessings is teach people how to get into God's presence. And he will fix everything that we don't even know needs to be fixed. I mean, that is, this is, this is like Azusa Street Revival level. Amen. I, I, I'm, 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 are, we, are we together? Jesus. Jesus. And she thought she went to the bathroom. Ah, everything taken care of. What a mighty God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because some people are wondering, how come those miracles are not happening again? They are happening. Let's go to verse 2, please. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. We're going to look at 12 of those fruits. Now, if you look at it, two trees of life, 12 each to 24. But we'll just look at 12. And, and, and this is just to help us know what to expect. Now, I, I rounded up sort of the, the previous service by saying that when the river begins to flow, then that's where we need the seed of the word to be planted in our hearts. Then the tree begins to grow from there. Okay? So now, let's go to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. Say with me, I am a distributor of life. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now, if you're counting, there's how many of them? Seven of them. These are some of the fruits that we'll get to the other five shortly. Seven fruits that Jesus died for that we can find on the tree of life. Remember, Jesus is the tree of life. They came to him and said, how can I have eternal life? And he said, when you know the one that God sent, Jesus, that is eternal life. So, Jesus died so that we can gain access to these things. Let us start with power. Power is the ability to get things done. The Lord lays on your heart to write a book. You start the book and you finish the book. That is power. Many people get stuck. They know how to start. They cannot finish. Part of the tree of life is power. The ability to remove obstacles. Everybody has obstacles in their way. We all have people in our families that we wish were not there. We all have people in our communities we wish were not there. So don't think it's just you. We all had or have crazy bosses. But when there is power, you are able to remove barriers on your path to achieving your goals. Power is the ability. You don't need to feel it, but it's the ability to get things done. That's one of the fruit on the tree of life. Power. So we go to bed at night and wake up with a fresh release, like your battery has been charged, and you're ordinarily, and you're ready to go about your day, getting things done. You don't have to cry when you face opposition. Remove the opposition. Now, may I remind you, the devil pursues everybody, but he doesn't catch everybody. He's after everybody, but he does not catch up with everybody. No, it's not everybody. There's power. There's power. How do we grow in power? You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That's one of the fruits in the tree of life. Power. Ability to get things done. This is my goal for the year. And I'm moving methodically. Opposition comes. Resistance comes. But they are removed. And I continue moving forward. And I achieve my goals. That's power. Let's leave that scripture on the screen, please. That's power. That's power. So you have a right as you go through the process to get to a point where you gain access to the tree of life and you see the fruit of power and you eat that fruit. And that fruit is from the word of God. I came across Micah chapter 3 verse 8. And this was where for me personally, the fruit of power came inside of me. And I received life from power. But I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. To declare unto Israel her transgressions and unto Jacob her sins. Power. Let's have that please. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. When the Holy Ghost is and has worked on your soul, then the seed can now be planted. Then it will result in the fruit of life. If you get this prematurely, it will just fall flat because the heart is not ready. You read this, but you remember this person and that person and that person and that person. Says, mm, I don't think so. But when your heart is ready, you receive this and, and you, just, you just get charged. I am full of power 
by the Spirit of the Lord. No weakness in me. No weakness in me. No weakness in me. I am full of power. I can do anything that I need to get done. I don't need anybody's opinion. I've come in agreement with Scripture. Life. Anytime I feel like maybe the power is reducing, I just, I just remember Micah 3.8. And I can sense my spirit charging again. Charging, charging, charging. Another 3.8, Amos chapter 3 verse 8. The lion has roared. Who will not hear? Ha! And I, and I identify with the lion. <laughs> A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? What is prophecy? Prophecy is repeating what God has said. So when God speaks and they hear, when I speak to, they must hear. It's power. You see, some people give instructions, people don't listen. Even when they shout. But there are some, they just, they, they can whisper the instruction. Even though there's a spirit of rebellion inside the person, there will be no more peace until they follow that instruction. The instruction will follow them into their sleep. <laughs> a lion has roared. How did the lion roar? Even its appearance is a roar. You can't say you don't know a lion. You can't say you don't know a lion. Even the look alone would, let, would interpret a lion to you. How is it that a newborn baby calf can see a lion and already start running? <laughs> it's like this thing I've seen. Ah, when I was in my mother's womb, she was running and said, Lion, lion, lion. <laughs> Power is one of the fruits that comes. There is no room for weakness in the kingdom of God. You cannot achieve anything by being weak. They will crush you on the way. Ah, cry today, cry tomorrow, back out today, back out tomorrow, waiting for people to stop talking so you can speak. <laughs> ah. You know, there is the etiquette in communication, and then there's the, there's the power in communication. There are some people you relate to them, they'll never give you room to talk. You know, in some workplaces, some meetings, no room. From start to finish, start to finish, they will, they will monopolize the meeting. But when there's power, and, and when you now start talking, then they'll talk over you. But when there's power, I say, excuse me, can I please finish? With confidence, with, with alacrity and audacity. And they look at you and they say, okay, yeah, <laughs> let me finish. I'm not done gathering my thoughts, okay? Just be patient. And you continue talking. You don't need to shout. You don't need to be rude. You don't need to remove your headband. <laughs> I said, do you know who I am? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to display your nature. <laughs> Just be calm. That's power. That's power. And when you speak, they remember what you said. Imagine in a two hours meeting, they can remember what you said in under 30 seconds. That's power. It gives your word weight. It gives your words weight. It gives your word weight. That's one of the fruits. Number two, let's go back to Revelation 5.12, is riches. So which means that when you gain access to that tree of life, and you receive power, you can disseminate power. Remember, the level of the tree is you not only have it, you can give it. You not only have it, but you can give it. So, so there are times where you have to touch somebody that was weak. And then they come back to life. Oh my goodness, when you spoke, suddenly I just got excited. That's, that's distributing Power. Then riches is another fruit. Riches. I mean, we know riches. <laughs> we know rich and we know riches. Amen. 
<laughs> you know, it, it is one, there is one thing, you know, it, it is one thing to have a good job. Um, but if you lost the job, things are not good anymore. You are not rich. You are, no, you are just temporarily rich. You are not rich. Where God forbid you lose a job and three months you're back to square one or less than three months. No, that's not riches. We thank God for that, but that's not the riches we're talking about. <laughs> that's not the riches we're talking about. We're talking about gaining access to the resources in the land. Gaining access, either directly or indirectly. That's riches. Don't be deceived. Before she passed on and now the king, the queen of England might tell you, oh, this is how much comes in every year. Don't be deceived. But yet, they can control the riches in so many other countries and call forth resources when it is needed. So riches is not about what is in your account. It is what you can summon when you need it. Are, are, we, are we talking because some people are rich, but the devil has convinced you you are poor. You can summon resources when it is needed. You can summon resources when it is needed. You can call it forth as riches. Jesus needed to pay taxes. And it seemed like there was no money. He told Peter where to go to get the money. He needed a coat, brand new Rolls Royce coat. Amen. Brand new, never won. <laughs> never. He told the disciples too, we don't know their names. Thomas would not have been one of them. He sent them, go to the village, you see the coat, nobody has written on it. Go and untie it and bring it to me. Go to the dealership, tell them, Pastor Emmanuel said. <laughs> don't mention my last name, just say. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, Pastor E, Pastor E. That's better, Pastor E. That's all. And let them be looking for Pastor E. Amen. And we pray they find him. <laughs> it, that is riches, the ability to summon resources. He needed a room for his Passover meal. And he was able to commandeer the upper room at moment's notice. That's riches. Ah, he's one of the fruit. Don't tell me you don't need riches. No, don't tell me that. One of the, I, I mean, I, it is said, according to research, that one of the major topics, bones of contentions in marriages is money. Money, money. Either the absence of it or the presence of it or how it will be spent is money. Imagine a scenario where money no longer becomes a bone of contention. Imagine that reality. We said in the third service that you can operate by faith. You can see the tree of life by faith. Hope deferred makes the heart weak. But when desire is fulfilled, it becomes a tree of life. Every time you sow a seed, every time you give to God, every time you tithe, you have opportunities to walk into the fruit of riches. Hmm. I'm just testifying. I've reached a point where I don't do it anymore now. I just, I teach other people because I made a vow with God. I've reached a point where I can summon, I can call forth money if I need it. And when I need it, it must come. Some of you might be keeping my money in your account. You are just keeping it. It's like you've done some work as a contractor and uh, they've not paid you yet. The money is not yet in your account. You've sent in your invoice. It is net 30, net 60, whatever, net whatever, whatever. And they've not paid you yet. But you know that that money is yours and it is coming. That's the ability to summon resources. Every time God tells us to give, he's doing us a favor. He's doing us a favor. I, you know, because of time, we can't go into how to cultivate every of these fruits. 
just trying to hit the nail on the head and then get to the twelfth one and then we pray. So riches is one of the fruits from the tree of life. Some people ignorantly say, oh, Jesus was poor. You know, he was riding on a donkey. And, and I say, what kind of donkey brain is that? <laughs> what kind of? Jesus was, was poor. Yet his, his, his outfits, the soldiers were fighting for his outfits. In those days, it's only the rich people that have seamless outfits. Where it's not, it's not tied. In. I mean, the, the color purple is royalty. Everything about it was alluring to them. <clears throat> they, were, they, were, they had to cast lots for his outfit. No, I beg to differ. He was not broke. He just chose not to accumulate wealth. He had a treasurer. A broke person will not need a treasurer. <laughs> what are you treasuring? <laughs> I mean, Judas was a treasurer. He was a thief and a treasurer. He was stealing, 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 but there was still money in the treasury. How about that? He stole and stole and stole. Ah, there's still more. I have to steal again. There's still more money. To the point where when he told Judas, go and do what you want to do quickly, they thought he meant he should go and give things again to the poor. Why read your Bible? Is there. When Jesus told Judas that, you know, when he said, someone here at the table will betray me, and then he fed Judas and told him, what you want to do, do it quickly. Then Satan entered Judas. The others thought Jesus meant that he should go and give to the poor like they normally do. Jesus was not broke. Riches. Number three, wisdom is one of the fruit. Wisdom. Knowing the right things to do at every point in time. I, I, I love, 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 love wisdom because foolishness is not, is unattractive. But wisdom is very attractive. Wisdom is a, a you see someone, they just started working. They've not bought any assets. They went to buy a $100,000 car. That's not attractive. No. And they're just living to pay bills. Pay car payments here, pay this here, pay that there. No, that is not attractive. But you know what is attractive? They just started, they're already shoring up their life. Giving to God, tithing accurately. Because that's when they'll claim they don't know math anymore. Ten percent, I don't, ten, ten, ten what? You? No. <laughs> and they're saving. And then they invest. The next thing you know, pastor, come and bless my house. I just bought the house. Really? How much do you make? Oh, but the house. Oh, pastor, another one. Oh, another one. <laughs> you know, pastor, just give me your schedule for the year because you'll be blessing houses every month. Because they are using their resources with wisdom. Wisdom. Knowing the right thing to do at every point in time and doing it. There are some things some of us buy that we have no business buying if we were walking in wisdom. That's one of the fruits from the tree of life. You know who to run away from and you know who to associate with because of wisdom. You know who is lying and who is saying the truth because of wisdom. I located in the book of Ecclesiastes how Solomon initiated the process of research. He said, I personally searched out these things. I thought about what it looked like without any inhibition, self-control, and I applied myself to that research. He had hypotheses and he went and he kept testing and growing in wisdom and that's practical wisdom. But yet you find people today, you give them advice, they've never attempted it, but they'll argue with you that it will not work. Yeah, they've never done it. And they came for advice. And they'll leave. They, they'll argue with you it will not work. Yet they have never attempted it because they heard it did not work for somebody. Wisdom. Because of time, let's go to number four. 
strength. What is strength? Physical vitality. Physical vitality. Physical vitality. What does it mean? It means where there's life in every part of your body. Every part of your body, your head, your eyes, your eyes, your eyes, your, 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 your teeth, every part of your body has life. That is strength. Moses, at the age of 120, climbed the mountain himself to go and die. Abraham took Isaac to go sacrifice him. He got Isaac at 100, and Isaac was a teenager at that time. So let's say 110, 115, 140, whatever the age, but over 110 years old for sure. He went on a three days journey. It is not right for you as a child of God that you're always praying to get parking close to the mall. Right by the very entrance. Because this pain here, that pain there. No, 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 no. That is not meant to be. Don't use your age as an excuse. It is not meant to be. It's not meant to be. At 80, say, Pastor, those were old time people. What's the difference? 80 in the Old Testament. Is it still not 80 now? Or have we adjusted? <laughs> no, it's the same thing. Oh, they used to live long then. That has nothing to do with anything. 80 is 80. Caleb still went to fight battles at 80. Abraham still went to fight. When he needed to bring Lot back, he joined them in the battle at the age of 90 or so. Strength. And let me tell you how this manifests. The Holy Ghost will begin to give you your own manual for keeping your body healthy. God walked six days, rested on the seventh. He, the Holy Ghost will let you know the kind of food that you need to eat for strength and the ones you need to avoid. You, not everybody, you specifically. I know some people, they must not eat beans. Not only will their tummy become royal rumble, but, but it can actually lead to death. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. He told you, avoid this. Avoid that. Well, it was the last time I had rice now and spaghetti. It's gone. And it looks like it's gone forever. Even though I like jollof rice, but rest in peace. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> He'll begin to show you. There are some people that must not touch cake. You must not touch it. You must not touch it. You must not. It's not about weight, size, or no, no, no. It's about health and strength. Because you realize the moment you have some things, it is time to sleep. And you go from fast to slow motion. <laughs> Even your brain goes into slow motion. And you're wondering what is going on? What is happening to me? No. But there are some things you eat and you are alive. You are alive. That's the, the, the fruit of strength. Strength. You know how far to go before you rest. That's strength. That's strength. That's strength. Amen. Amen. You show you the kind of exercise you need to do to keep that strength going. Many people have turned exercise to just body, you know, just showing off the body and all, and hence the kind of outfits they wear and the, all those things. It, it, it's not about all that, this shape and that shape, even though in a way it is good, but that should not be the focus. <laughs> Amen. Why should, should, it should not be the focus. <laughs> I don't think, you know, people are chasing six-pack and six-pack. So they are looking for every opportunity to just remove their shirt. Because why you, you don't know how many packs I have now. If it's two pack, you don't know. <laughs> so all those things are just very, very, very carnal. The main thing is what is, the, what is your health like? You climb the flight of stairs and you're breathing like you just came from Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> I had a 
they come to my meetings. They just come, come up the stairs. I say, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. I say, you know what, I'll give you some time. Just, amen. Strength and vitality. Let's move on, please. Number five, honor. At this rate, you might not cover everything. Honor. It is, it, is, it is what comes on you that makes you respected. Respectable and respected. That's honor. That's honor. Nothing to do with age, race, gender, height, class. No. It's just something that comes on you. It's a grace. It's one of the fruit from the tree of life that just makes you a candidate for honor. They might not know who you are. I remember I went to pray for someone. I think uh, Stamiko is, uh, is around there. I think he was upstairs already. I uh, went to the, uh, cov- the, one of the hospitals then, a few years ago. I, I, I went. I was not, I don't wear collar. I don't wear anything as clergy. You know, I'm just a child of God. So, got there. And I went, got to the entrance. And the security guard looked at me and said, you're a man of God. Please pray for me. Pray for me. I, said, I was so embarrassed. By the street, oh, in, in the open. Please. And he knelt down. I just quickly laid hands on him, look around there. <laughs> and I went upstairs. I'm like, why do you have to? But I kept ruminating on that incident. Is it the looks? I, I don't look old. Well, no matter what you think, I know I look young. Amen. <laughs> it was even many years ago. <laughs> and I was wondering, what did he see? I said, ah, this, that man just enjoyed. I'll be shocked if you, if you remain there as in that job for a long time. I'll be shocked. He took something. (laughs) Amen. Rather, I gave something. I allowed him to take something. Honor. Honor. Where others are being disrespected, but and get and they are getting away with it, but they just cannot disrespect you in that way. That's honor. The next one is now glory. What is glory? Glory is the evidence of the presence of God in your life. It is the glow, glory, glow, glow, glory, glow that comes on you that makes it obvious that this man or this woman is carrying a presence. That's glory. It is one of the fruits that comes from the tree of life. Glory. 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 People can call it all kinds of things. What cream are you using? You are shining. It's glory. (laughs) Amen. Oh, you're always smiling. Oh, this and this aura. They call it aura. All kinds of things. It's just called glory. The evidence of divine presence. The aura of divine presence. And number seven, blessing. Hmm. Blessing. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow to it. Blessing, those are the words that God speaks to arrange your future. You, you, there, there, are some, there are some words God releases. Like he said, in this assembly, it is forbidden for anybody to be small. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. In blessing, I will bless you. Those are the words he's releasing at different points in time. He, he'll package it. You see, when you, when you hear the blessings of the Lord, the packaging is important. The way the words come together, you, you say, oh my goodness, this, this is powerful. It is forbidden for anybody to be small here. Full stop, period. Mic drop, and it's gone. <laughs> Amen. That's called a blessing. A blessing. When you eat from the fruit of the tree of life, you're a candidate for blessings. You just do things. God can just tell you, tell you, oh, this person needs water right now. Take the water to them now. 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 And just go. Bring the water. I say, oh my goodness. I was almost dying of thirst. How did you know I needed water? And then the blessing is released. It is not the content, it is not the price, it is, the, it is God packaging you in a way that you show up when, <laughs> you know, like Jacob that stole his brother's blessing. He just provided something that somebody with, 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 a, with a 
quiver full of blessings wanted to release. And he made it available. And the words were dished out to him. So this, the way this blessing works, it, 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 it coordinates your life to put you in the right place at the right time to receive the right blessings. Number eight now. One of the fruits is purpose from the tree of life. Purpose. <sighs> you want to find lasting fulfillment? You know, you know, you are doing what you were created by God to do. You are the center of the will of God. Where I'm standing now, 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 I am inside the will of God. This is what I was created to do. This is my purpose. And no matter how hard we work and how the body responds to the work, I know I am doing, I'm not longing for something. I know I am doing what I was created to do. It will get bigger, it will get better, but, but I am already inside it. That's part of the fruit that comes from the tree of life. So for some, some of you, the Lord has to redirect your steps because you've gone far away. You have pursued money, not purpose. Then he'll begin to bring you to that thing that you do that your heart will just be beating for joy. You'll be so excited. There's this YouTuber called Mr. Beast. I've talked about him before because he's one of the best at what he does. In that documentary or, or, or that interview, showed where he lives. He's someone that spends millions of dollars upon millions every month. Million, about $150 million on average every month across all the different channels. This is where I live. The bed, the studio, the toilet, everything. Just one, two the apartment. So yeah, because my life, I, my life is just about making the best videos ever. It's, like it's flowing in my veins. This was what I was created to do. I said, look at that. This is what, just one channel alone, can, you can spend $50 million every month on the main channel. That they spend, that they spend, that they spend. This is what I was created to do. When you find that thing, say this problem is just going to sleep because at night it's just there thinking, okay, what's the next idea? The next idea, the next idea, the next idea, the next idea. And it's just flowing. No other video online can match this. No other channel. From one big thing to another big thing to another big thing. There was a time they rented the whole island. And did some. And I said, what kind of craziness is this? But they drop a video now. By the time you, by time, and I receive, you see, you, see you, can, you can receive mantle even from unspiritual people. He has a mantle for going viral. Mantle. And as I honor him, I'm tapping into it. They drop one video within one hour, over 1.5 million views in one hour. It's grace. It is grace. Wherever I got it from, God knows, but every good thing came from God. It is grace. We not only covet anointing of Catherine Kuhlman, anointing of uh, William Seymour, only preachers. No, 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 no. There are other anointings we must covet. There's the anointing Obama has to rule. Out, it came out of nowhere and just suddenly became president after one speech. <laughs> it's grace. I don't agree with him in his policies, but I observe the grace that he has. Purpose. Where you know what you were created to do and you are blessed enough to begin to do it. Look at Mother Teresa of blessed memory. That's purpose. That's purpose. And the resources will come. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. One of the other fruits is a fruit of direction, divine direction. Mm. 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 If you are not guided in this life, ah, human beings are wicked to a large extent. Wicked, wicked. The Bible says the heart of man is very deep. 
desperately evil. But when you are, and I am divinely guided, ah, no weapon formed against us can prosper. They set a trap. You didn't know of the trap, but you just get a sense in your spirit, don't go there. And you go somewhere else. You later find out after the fact that there was a trap there. They gang up against you. Say, surely they will gather, but not of me. You were not aware. Conspiracies upon conspiracies, even from people you don't expect it from. Divine direction is one of the fruits from the tree of life. The Bible said it. Adam, Adam, even though he didn't eat the fruit of life, but, but from association with God, he saw the animals and he named them. He was properly guided by inspiration to give them the right names, only to find out that that was actually their names because God endorsed it. So if you want to blame anybody for hippopotamus, you blame him. <laughs> we try to spell it hippo, hippo, hippo. I'm glad we've passed that stage now. We have autocorrect, amen. <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> we don't have too much time. We'll round up by the grace of God. So, so those are eight fruits, or nine, nine, nine. So, round up another day. But I think these four services have given us a very good picture from start to finish. We know how we are when we come into Christ and we have an idea of the process that is followed. There will, before we get to a point where we are now a distributor of these virtues, of glory, of honor, of power, of wisdom, of might, of riches, and all these other wonderful things. But look at what the Bible says in closing. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4. In closing, Proverbs 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue. What does it mean by wholesome tongue? A tongue that speaks the word, wholesome words, positive words. A tongue that joins, declare with Pastor E. Amen. A <laughs> a wholesome tongue. You are not speaking death and expecting life. A wholesome tongue. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed. You just had a flat tire, but you are declaring, I am blessed. Nothing goes down in my life. Devil, you have missed this trap. I cannot fall into this trap. Everything works well for me. You just came from the doctor, gave you some nonsensical news. Say, no, 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 this is not me. This must be a mistake. This can never be me. No, they will call me to correct it. This cannot be me. It cannot be me. It cannot be me. My body is a temple of the living God. This body will serve the Lord. A wholesome tongue. You are feeling the pain, but you are not speaking the pain. You are seeing the challenge, but you are not speaking the challenge. Everybody is abandoning you is the reality, but your words are saying, I have all the people I need to fulfill destiny. The reality is, there's no money. But a wholesome tongue says, I am rich. <laughs> the reality is, you are weak. But a wholesome tongue says, I am strong. Because the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. The reality is, you are not hearing from God. But a wholesome tongue says, I hear from God clearly. My ears are built specially to hear God. And I will hear his voice. A wholesome tongue. The reality is there's trouble in the family. It's this divided. But a wholesome tongue says, we are united. That's it. It's a tree of life. A wholesome tongue. The reality is the children are are going in the wrong direction. But a wholesome tongue says, all my children will serve the Lord. Me and the children the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. Please rise up to your feet. A wholesome tongue. 
a wholesome tongue. We are making these amazing declarations because a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So you're not wasting your time when you're declaring. What is it that you want to see? Why are you not saying it? Say what you want to see. Say what you want to see. Say what you want to see. You don't need to feel it. You need to say it. A wholesome tongue. Repeat after me, please. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. I have a wholesome tongue, so I have a tree of life. A wholesome tongue. A wholesome tongue can say, I'll be promoted every week this month. You know the amazing thing about your tongue? You can say whichever one. If you want promotion every day, say it. If you are enough to believe it, say it. Who is going to arrest you? Say it. Say it. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. If they list out failures and you see Emmanuel Adeo say that it must be a fake one, it can never be me. Impossible. It can never happen. It can never happen. No, because I don't say it. You can curse me all you want. What I say is what matters. My own agreement is what matters. And I'll never agree with that. That's what matters. Oh dear, I'm on that course, generational course. Were you in that generation? This is your generation. Are you in agreement with the course? No. Then stop it. I'm not under any course. Jesus Christ died to free me from the course of the law. I'm not under any course. I'm delivered today in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak now. Begin to speak. Make declaration. My face is what's seen. My appearance is celebrated. Oh, in the corridors of power. Everywhere my name is heard, it is celebrated. I am a carrier of divine presence. Ratush kaparakusiata. ribatosia. I have access to the fruits in the tree of life because Jesus died. Dokondo mokotondia. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We're going to pray. Two or three prayer points, but very quickly. You're here today and you're not born again. I want to pray with you today. Perhaps that is why the Lord brought you here. You are not born again. You have not accepted Jesus into your heart. I want to pray with you now. Thank you, Father. If you're here, that is you. Just lift up your hand so I can see you. And I'll pray with you right there where you are. You want to give your heart to Jesus? You want to make him your Lord and Savior? I want to pray with you. What an amazing day we've had today. In every service, practically, people getting saved. Glory to Jesus. You're here, you're not saved. Or maybe you were once saved and you went astray. And you want to come back home. I want to pray with you. Just lift up your hand where you are. So I can see you and pray with you. You're online, please do the same thing. Just lift up your hands so we can see you. We can pray with you. Oh, I'll never see the Lord God fail. Never see. No, no, no. Oh, I, I have never, never seen, seen the Lord God fail. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I have, have never, never seen, seen the Lord God fail. No, 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 no. One no. more time. I have, I have never, never seen, seen the Lord God fail. No, no. no. People online that want to say that prayer, please repeat after me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner in need of a Savior. Dear Jesus, save my soul. I know you died for me and rose on the third day that I may be saved. Come into my heart, Jesus. Make my life your own. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me to live a life that pleases you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Congratulations if you said that prayer. We're happy for you. Please go on our website. The address is cccghq.org. 
Please fill out the form completely. We'd love to send you materials to help you grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed. You are blessed. Tell your other neighbor, you are blessed. You are prosperous. You are increasing on every side. Not in weight, but increasing in glory, in grace. Amen. Don't prophesy what they don't want. Amen. Hallelujah. This is an amazing week. You'll be smiling all through this week. You'll be laughing all through this week. Your song will be, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are a distributor of life. Any death that comes around you will be dispelled. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing acceleration in the spirit. And I speak acceleration into you. In the name of Jesus. No more slow motion. Begin to move with speed. Begin to redeem time. Begin to move with speed. Begin to redeem time. In the name of Jesus. I speak acceleration over this ministry. Begin to accelerate. 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 In the name of Jesus. No more slow motion. I curse that spirit of slow motion. That sleep and slumber. That heaviness. In the name of Jesus. We are moving with speed. And you are moving with precision. So shall it be. They will go and look for you where you once were. And they will realize you are no more there. Because you have gone higher. You have gone higher. You have gone higher. Thank you Holy Spirit. I... The Holy Spirit just reminded me, I was supposed to sing, we are going higher, yes I am, when I came on the stage. That's the song he laid on my heart. I didn't see a drummer, so I sort of was trying to, and then he just kept my mind. Amen. It's not your fault, drummer, that's fine. No, no, it's, it's okay. It, it was me, amen. I am going higher, yes I am. I'm going higher today. Let's have it on the screen, please. Let's have it on the screen, please. I'm going higher. We are making yes, prophetic declarations. Into dominion to stay. I'm going. I'm going above the shadows. Into the presence of God. Into the presence. You are tempting me with that busy man. Oh, I'm going. One more time, we need to go. Amen. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. I'm going higher today. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. Into dominion to stay. dominion to stay. I'm going above the shadows. Into the presence of God. Into the presence of Jesus. I'm going higher today. Amen. Hallelujah.